All right, let's just jump right into it. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm Worcester, also known as the guy who did not get nearly enough sleep last night. And I'm going to be running Pokemon Fire Red. And this category is called Trainer Tower. And so the object of this category is to complete the Trainer Tower, which a lot of people who have played this game actually don't even know exists because it's a post-game facility. Okay, so I believe the trainer names were Whooper Z, Whooper, oh, Z, and then the rival name was just U. Which is good because you save a lot of time by having one character names. The rival doesn't show up nearly as much as the trainer, but it still helps quite a bit having a one character name there. But yeah, so the Trainer Tower is a post-game facility. It is on Seven Island, and in order to access Seven Island, you have to both catch 60 Pokemon to upgrade your Pokedex to the National Pokedex, and you have to do the Seven Island side quests. But the 60 Pokemon is what makes this speedrun really, really interesting, because it's every single run is different to one another because the same, you don't get the same 60 Pokemon every single run. There are a few that you always get, like you always pick the same starter, which is going to be Squirtle. And there are a few things like gift Pokemon that are always going to be faster to get than catching other Pokemon. But there's so much variability in how the run goes. And because you have to catch a lot of Pokemon, there's a lot of variability in catching the Pokemon themselves as well. So we're just going to get uh, Squirtle here. So I need really good stats on this Squirtle to be able to do the run because I use Squirtle a lot. And so the two determinant factors about whether the Squirtle is good or not is whether it has a good nature and then it's IVs. So IVs are a number between 0 to 31, which determine just how good the stat is. Makes a difference of one stat point at level 100. Obviously less at lower levels. That is not good enough. So I'm going to reset. So at this stage, I'm actually just going to reload a backup save. So I don't sit here resetting for two hours. And unfortunately, uh, because I had to create the backup save before the run started, they have the names of the uh, the incentives that were winning at the time that I created the backup save. So what we're going to do is is I am going to donate so that those names win. So we're going to use Patball and Basball. So I think it's something like forty six dollars for Patball and how much it was for Basball. I'm not actually sure. We'll figure it out after the run. Seven. Seven. Thank you. But yeah, so this Squirtle, it has very, very good special attack. Uh, its defenses are all atrocious, but it has good speed and its attack is kind of average. But the most important stats are special attack and speed. Squirtle is going to be using mostly special attacks throughout the run. Its only physical attacks it's going to be using are Tackle and Mega Kick. Okay, both the defenses got plus two there, so at least that's all right. Uh, defenses obviously do matter because you want to be taking as little damage as possible. But I wasn't going to sit there uh, resetting for an absolutely perfect Squirtle for the, the backup save. Oh, so uh, normally when I would speedrun this game on my stream, I would have like a counter that would count how many Pokemon I have, just so everybody at home knows how many Pokemon I've got. But in lieu of doing that, I just have some sticky notes here that I'm just going to attach to me. So I've got Squirtle now, so we've got one. So, yeah, I'm taking out this level 2 Radita. Ideally, I want level 7 because I'll learn Bubble at level 7, and I want that as soon as possible. The first trainer fight that I have to do is actually against a level 9 Weedle in Brooding Forest, which is really scary. Having Bubble beforehand makes it a lot easier. Given the Squirtle has very good special attack, it also helps for um, catching a few things beforehand. So some of the most important catches in this run are actually right at the start of the game because, and I'll explain a bit later exactly why, but you really, really want level three Pokemon or lower, as many as possible. You want at minimum four, but I mean, if you could have six, that would be incredible. Usually I get four or five. This Pidgey has very good defense, by the way. You can definitely three hit Pidgeys, but this one's gonna be a four hit. But this will take me to level seven. Level two Rattata before was very lucky. That's the best encounter you can get. I didn't two hit it though, but still very good. Okay. 
I didn't get plus two special attack there, so the special attack's very good, it's just not insanely good. So the nature is rash, which is plus special attack minus special defense, and so nature's increase one stat by 10% and decrease one by 10%, which on a total is actually a negative on a sum of all of your stats because Pokemon floors every single calculation. So if you have 11 naturally in a stat, minus 10% is minus 1.1, so it takes it to 9.9 .9, and then it floors that to 9. So you actually lose 2. And similarly, if it's plus 10%, you only gain 1. However, that's still very, very worth it because special attack is just very good. So my IV in special attack is at least 20, but it is not 29 plus. If it was at least 29 to 31, I would have gotten plus 2 on that level up. Isn't that much of a big deal? Uh, I will still be able to do the high special attack route. So I have two different routes for whether I have very high special attack or I don't. This one's still considered very high special attack. 30 counter there is a bit unlucky. I actually avoided taking some extra grass because I already had the two encounters. But I still got another one. On a low encounter chance. Oh, nice movement, dude. Uh, so going back to Oak's lab, delivering his parcel, and now I'm going to get Pokeballs. So when I go through that grass again, I'll be looking to catch a level 3 Rattata and a level 3 Pidgey, ideally. If I can only get one of them, Pidgey is better because I can get level 3 Rattata later on as well. I can also get like level 30 odd Rattata and Pidgey, which can kind of be useful because then you can give them a rare candy and evolve them into Raticate and Pidgeotto respectively. But I would much rather the level 3s for this run. Much, much rather the level 3s. So he only gives me five, which is actually a bit dicey, because you could at this stage want to catch a level three Pidgey, a level three Rattata, a level three Pikachu, a level three Riedel, and a level three Caterpie, all before I can actually buy more Pokeballs. It's not very likely that all of those things show up, but it is possible, and I would not want to run out of balls, especially if the last one that shows up is the level three Pikachu, because the level three Pikachu is the absolute crux of this run. And if I can get it early, it saves like 10 minutes on average. Why did I run away? Cooked gaming moment. I wanted to catch that Pidgey. I was even explaining it as I was... Man has not slept enough. All right, it's another Pidgey. Perfect. Yeah, the other one just, I wasn't feeling it. Didn't have good, uh, good health, I guess. Speed drop there is useless. Very good. Very good. Okay, if I'm going to die anywhere in the game, that's actually one of the better spots because it's just going to take me back to Pallet Town and I can just walk back up. That's incredible that I died to a level 3 Pidgey. Incredible. Yes, my mum gives me a condescending talk now for what an idiot I am for not healing. It was the right decision not to heal there. But now I will be at full health, so it kind of saves me on potions now as well. Potions are a bit dicey for the early game as well. Because that's the other thing with having to catch 60 Pokemon. Level 4! You've got to be kidding. Level 2 and 3 are much, much more common. But yeah, level 4 is absolutely useless to me. It has to be 3 or lower. If I go two passes through Rat 1 and get no catches, thank you. Please be level 3. Thank you. All right. Surely I will catch this Pidgey. Nothing could go wrong. It won't kill me. All right, good. So the, the scary thing there is obviously critting the second bubble, then I would kill the Pidgey. He crit me again. Jesus Christ, man. Calm down. But now nah, this will catch. All right. We are at two. All right, so as I mentioned, I can get Rattata later. You can get level three Rattatas on the way uh, west of Viridian, which I come back to where this is where the final gym of the game is. And I can also get level three Mankeys there, so I'll definitely hunt for one of them now that I don't have Rattata here. 
I could also get Radata. I'm gonna like cut through some grass just before Brilliant Forest. You can get one there as well. But it's very, very unlikely. Because the encounter rate through grass is significantly lower on the first few steps. In Fire Red, you don't actually have encounter immunity like you do in other games for the first three tiles. But for the first five instead, it's just significantly reduced. They use a similar formula in the Sinnoh games as well. But then in like later games, like Heart Gold Soul Silver brings back the encounter immunity. And then in Gen 5, they bring back the lower encounter rate. They just flip flop between what they're doing with lower encounters for the first steps. I have no idea why other than to confuse six year old children playing the game. All right, so route two, this is very, very short. This is the cut through the grass I was talking about. It does save a second if I don't get an encounter, so hooray. Make up for the minute that I lost before. But so yeah, Viridian Forest. So the main thing I would love to see here is a level three Pikachu. It is a bit dangerous getting it right now because level three Pikachu can do a lot of damage, but I have to get a level three Pikachu in this run and it is only a 4% encounter. So it is very possible that I spend like 20 minutes here looking for a level three Pikachu. But if I don't get it here, just going through Viridian Forest, I will come back later to get it when I have Ultra Balls because it'll be easier to catch. Uh, I'll actually probably use a Nest Ball to catch it. But you can also get level 3 Caterpie and Weedle. If I get higher than level 3 Caterpie, I will still catch it. That's level 4. I will still catch this. But I will not catch a Weedle that is higher than level 3. And the reason for that is Weedle has Poison Sting, which is just a bit more dangerous. Because I only have one antidote for this part of the game. Alright, we are at 3. But the reason I'm okay with higher level Caterpies and Weedles compared to the Pidgey and Rattata is I also would like to evolve Caterpie into Metapod and Butterfree and Weedle into Kakuna and Beedrill. There's just a lot of Pokemon up for grabs there. And if I have to come back to Pikachu, which is very likely, and I find another Caterpie that's level 3 before I find the level 3 Pikachu, then I can catch that one and use that as a level 3 and evolve the level 4. Uh, I'm just going to go up here. Talk to this guy. So this is the first trainer fight of the game. As I mentioned, level 9 Weedle. This thing is actually quite scary because it's actually a higher level than you, which is not very common for most of the fights in this game. And it has Poison Sting, which can poison you. Did not poison there. I'm in Torrent, so I don't want to heal yet. Do not crit poison me. Thank you. I am going to heal now. It looked like I actually might have been able to kill there in three hits. Those were very good ranges because I was in Torrent for all of them. But that Poison Sting did four damage. That was a max roll. It would have killed me. So this will be two more hits. Now that I'm not in Torrent, but that's fine. So Torrent as well, I should explain. So Torrent is Squirtle's ability. When Squirtle has one third or less of its maximum health, then its water type moves do 50% more damage. So in this case, Bubble. But also, later on in the game, it'll be Water Gun, Water Pulse, and Surf. Pick up this hidden potion here too. All right. Kakuna, that's useless, running away. Kakuna would be nice if I had a level three Weedle, because then I could catch the Kakuna, evolve it into Beedrill, and keep the level three Weedle. But as it stands, that's totally useless to me. So because I have really high health, because I healed at the end of the Weedle, I'm not going to have Torrent for like any of Brock's gym, which is a bit of a shame because it can save quite a few turns. With this special attack especially, I would have been able to one hit the Geodude, I would have been able to two hit Sandshrew, maybe one hit the Geodude. Onyx is generally a two hit either way which is the last Pokemon in this segment. But what I would like is to take more damage so that I'm pretty close to Torrent afterwards. It's extremely difficult to actually be in Torrent after Brock because the way Brock works is he has Rock Tomb on his Onyx, which does way more than his other moves, but he doesn't use it unless it will kill you. So if it's gonna do like 10 damage and you're at 15 health, he'll use like Bind or Tackle which does very little, but if you're at 10, when you're, you know, actually in Torrent range, then he'll use Rock Tomb and kill you. And when you kill the Onyx, you get two level ups. So even if you're right at the edge of Torrent, you then get a couple of level ups and go out of it. 
but Torrent is very, very useful for the segment right after Brock. So yeah, this Sandshrew is going to be a three hit. It's got Sand Attack, that's what I don't want to see. I'd probably just like to see Scratch take a bit of damage. Decurl is fine. Obviously I'm hitting it with Special Attack, so it raising its defense does not matter whatsoever. And yeah, got the three hit. So that's good, that'll put me to level 10, and then we're going to go fight Brock. Obviously first gym leader of the game, and this is a large reason why Squirtle is the best starter in this run. Because Squirtle is just very, very good for the first gym. Charmander is actually better than Bulbasaur as well. You would think Bulbasaur being a grass type would do quite well against the first gym as well, but it does not learn an actual attacking grass move until quite a high level, whereas Squirtle gets bubble at seven, so you don't really have to do any extra experience grinding. Charmander gets Metal Claw, which you can use. You can also do terrible strats just spamming uh, Ember. But Charmander has a much better late game compared to like Bulbasaur as well. Because Bulbasaur just does not get very many moves, and Grass is not a very good type. Yeah, see, I'm just going to be short of 12. So I'll hit 13 after Onyx. Uh, just kill, please. I'm going to heal. I'm going to heal. I'm pretty sure this would be a range. He's going to go Rock Tomb, because it's possible. But it'll probably do... Okay, it did 12. That was definitely the right call then. My defense is very, very bad if that's doing 12. But yeah, see, now I'm, I'm nowhere near Torrent, because Torrent would be 10, but I'm going to get two level ups. So essentially, I would need to be at, like, 6 on that kill. I'm really surprised Rock Tomb did 12, though. Yeah, my defense is very bad. But yeah, 13, I'm going to learn Water Gun. I'm just going to teach that over Tail Whip. So when teaching moves as well, I like to have, if possible, the move in slot 1 be the one that I'm getting rid of, so I can just mash A on that screen, because there's quite a bit of lag if you have to actually scroll down to different slots. Which is why earlier I switched Tackle to slot 2, getting rid of Tail Whip. I probably don't need Tackle either, but it is possible that I use Tackle uh, to catch a couple of pokes just to do less damage on the next route. Okay, so he gives me the TM for Rock Tomb, which is a pretty decent move, but not actually that useful. Because Squirtle can't learn it, so I'm just going to sell it for money and then buy quite a few things here. So we're going to sell Rock Tomb. Because it gives me 1500, which, as you can see, is a pretty decent amount at this stage. So we're going to buy five Pokeballs, just in case. Six potions. Three antidotes. Five Paraheal, I think. Uh, what have I forgotten to buy? Hmm, well, I've forgotten to buy something. What have I forgotten to buy? That's interesting. I should have less money because I died to the Pidgey. Antidote, Paraheal. Eh, we'll figure it out. Because normally you only have enough money to buy five repels there, but I could afford four. So yeah, now I get the running shoes, which is going to double my movement speed, which I'm sure you're all happy about because the walking speed is atrociously slow in this game. So yeah, with Torrent, I'd be able to one-hit all of these bugs on this trainer, but obviously I do not have Torrent, so I want him to keep attacking me. All of his pokes can either use an attacking move, so in Caterpie's case, Tackle, or they can use String Shot. String Shot's going to reduce my speed, and now I'm slower than all of his pokes. So now this is going to be even slower. Now he goes to Tackle. Oh, that's crit me. That's put me into Torrent. Okay, so I have it now, but I'm going to be slower than... Uh these other pokes. So if Weedle now goes Poison Sting Poison, I'm actually going to die. Okay, String Shot, that's good. I would like the next Caterpie to use Tackle as well, because I want to stay in Torrent after after a level up too. If I only get 2 health on the level up, I will still be in Torrent, because that'll be 12 out of 37. But if I got 3, I wouldn't be. So yeah, I'll definitely have Torrent for this whole stretch now. So that fight actually was not too bad. So I'll have it for level 15 too. That crit tackle was quite nice. Okay, so on this route as well, uh, 
I'm going to be going for a few catches after the next couple of fights. These fights are just going to be one hits with Water Gun. The absolute god poke to get here, which is extremely rarely seen, is a Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff's just a very rare encounter. Jigglypuff can also be at level 3 here. All of the other Pokemon here are well above level 3. Jigglypuff can also be at 5 and 7, but even if I get a 5 or 7 one, that's still very good because it's a free Pokemon that you're just not expecting to get at all, and it evolves with a Moonstone, so you can evolve it for free, so it's basically two Pokemon that you're just not expecting whatsoever. And then if it's level 3, then it's another level 3 you're not expecting, and it's just absolute jackpot. And so this is kind of the situation where I'm happy I've kept Tackle, because I'm in Torrent. If I see a level 3 Jigglypuff, I am not able to weaken it with even Bubble, because Bubble will kill it. But because I still have Tackle, I can weaken it with Tackle. Only thing I've got to be... Oh, so the thing I have to catch on this route is a Spearow. Because one of the Pokemon that I definitely want to get is Farfetch'd. And the only way to get Farfetch'd is to trade a Spearow for it. So I will hunt here until I get a Spearow. Uh, I, I have Pidgey and not Rattata, so I, I won't take Pidgey, I won't take Mankey, and I won't take Nidoran. So everything that isn't Spearow and Jigglypuff, I'm just going to run away from. Jigglypuff! Alright, it's level 5. So I can use Bubble on this. You can clearly see if that was level 3, I would have died. Yes, dude. That is fantastic. All right. Unfortunately, it's put me to sleep, and I do not have Awakenings. I was not supposed to buy Awakenings. That isn't what I forgot. All right, and there's Spiro. So I guess I'm just going to wake up on the Spiro. Okay, good. Taking a bit more damage there means because Squirtle evolves at level 16, and so he'll get a bit more health on that level, I should be able to keep Torrent into level 16 as well. How did that get out? No, Spiro. I don't want any more damage. I don't want to go any lower than this. The only Pokemon I'm ever expecting to get out of Pokeballs here is Jigglypuff, because its catch rate is way lower. How is Spiro doing this? This is ridiculous. Please get in the ball. And this is why you buy extra Pokeballs in case something like this happens. Okay, beautiful. I mean, that was the perfect encounter pattern, though. Getting Jigglypuff and then Spearow and nothing else. Could not ask for anything better there. And so, yeah. Typically how this game goes is you will have a segment that is just utter trash. And you will think, this is the worst category of all time. Why am I playing this? And then one minute later, it will be, this is the best category. How rewarding is this? I'm just getting the best luck ever. And so I'm going to go over here and buy this magic up. So that's going to be six. Uh, I have the note here, but I can't reach it in time. Uh, so I'm going to do a menu here, do quite a few things. I'm going to register this. I'm going to equip the Persian Berry that I just picked up before. And then we're going to use some repels through Mount Moon. So I could get encounters here and try and catch a few things, but a lot of the things here aren't actually that desirable. I would like to get them later. Like, for example, Zubat, I would rather catch in Victory Road, because if I catch one in Victory Road, I can evolve it into Golbat. And then Clefairy, I'm going to get later anyway. Geodude, again, I would prefer to get later. Paris, I would prefer to get later. So... One more trainer here that I'm going to fight optionally for experience. The main reason I want to fight some uh, another trainer here for extra experience is I want to get to at least level 19 before I fight Misty, because at level 19, Wartortle learns Bite. 
and I would like fight before I fight Misty because otherwise you have to use Mega Kick and Mega Kick is so unreliable. You do have to use it at different points of the run, so I am still going to teach Mega Kick at some point, but I do not want to use it for Misty. In this case, because I have the very high special attack, I'm actually going to go to level 20 before Misty. And so the these are kind of the two divergent routes based on what your special attack is. So on this one, I'm going to use two rare candies before Misty to get to level 20. And then I'm going to use all my rare candies afterwards from level 33 to 36 when I evolve to Blastoise. But on lower special attack routes, I only use one candy here. Then I use two candies from 28 to 30 in Rock Tunnel, and then two from 34 to 36. So on this route, I'm a bit higher until Rock Tunnel, but then I'm a bit lower until I get to Blastoise. But then at Blastoise, it converges. So yeah, that's seven, War Total. Just gonna go in here. I'm going to pick up a Backup Revive in this next area. This is actually going to be faster to get this because it'll allow me to play a little bit riskier. And then coming up here is the first spinner of the game. So spinners in this game will always react to you if you're running. So I'm gonna run on the last tile here to force him left. Just check he hasn't moved there on the pause and then get past him. So on that spinner, you have to walk two tiles beforehand uh, before you can pass him. And the way spinners in this game work is they're on different cycles that are like, they can spin every 32 frames. There are some that will spin on 32 and then potentially on 48, so that setup wouldn't work, but that setup does work in that case. Ideally, what I would like to be doing is running one tile within his vision, but if I did that, he would actually look up, because if you can do that, you can run and then just walk one tile and always get past them without having to pause. But in that case, I did have to pause to check. You can fight a different trainer in order to get to level 17 before this fight, but I like to get to 17 before the Zubat so that I have a much higher chance of actually taking it out in one hit. Just makes that a bit safer. So we're going to repel here. I'm going to use one of my candies now. And then I'm going to pick up this Moonstone to evolve Jigglypuff in a bit. And then we're going to go into this fight. So. Again, you could use both rare candies after this fight, but I like to be level 18 here. Level 18 makes a significant difference to power, because the way damage works in this game is it level actually affects it. It's not just stats. That's an excellent critical. That's a phenomenal critical. You never one hit Grimer, and Grimer has Disable, and a disabling Water Gun is really bad. So I'm going to move Water Gun to slot 2 now, because I'm about to get rid of a move. So I'm going to learn Bike and Mega Kick. So I can't put them both in slot 1, because I'm going to learn them both before I'm actually in a menu. So I'll put Bite in slot 1 and Mega Kick in slot 4. But yeah, so level makes a difference to how much damage you're doing, it's not just your stat. And so the way it works is every time you get to a level that ends in 0, 3, 5 or 8, you get a power increase to all of your moves. So the level up from 16 to 17 is actually pretty insignificant. It does make a bit of difference, obviously, because your stat goes up, but 17 to 18 makes a massive difference. So at 17, I would not be confident about one-hitting that Garima or the Voltorb. But at 18, I'm very confident. Okay, doesn't really matter what fossil you get there, just run straight up because it's just better for waiting for that guy to walk around. Just pick up a hidden Great Ball here and talk to this guy and learn Mega Kick. The guy on the left teaches you Mega Punch. Mega Punch has 80 power and 85 accuracy. Mega Kick has 120 power and 75 accuracy. Both are kind of garbage to use in runs, but you really do need at least one of them, and Mega Kick is better. Mostly to deal with grass types before I can learn an ice move. So I am going to duck up here, and I'm going to get another rare candy to go to level 20, and then I will combine that menu with using the Moonstone to evolve Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff, because I'm going to go into the Pokemon Center afterwards in order to deposit a few pokes. So there's Wigglytuff. That's eight. And did we have time for a quick donation? Yep. 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 
So we have $50 from Stigley who says, Hello from Ireland. Been watching Worcester for the last 10 years and it's always a joy watching him at ASM. Fingers crossed for good Sonic Boom luck. Yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of the move Sonic Boom later on in this run. It is the crescendo of this run. Um, so yeah, gonna go into here. Into the center, and we're going to do a bit of menuing. So I'm gonna put War Turtle in the box. That's just going to heal War Turtle. I do not want to leave it in there. I'm going to keep the Spearow in my party, along with... No, the Caterpie. Pick up Magicka, War Turtle. Yep. So I need the Spearow in my party because I'm going to trade it for Farfetch later. And I want the Caterpie in my party because I might be... No, 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 no. I do not need to go to the Mart. <laughs> Going the wrong way. On the lower stretch, you go to the Mart to buy a few uh, Super Potions before Misty. But on this route, I don't need to do that. Got it in my own head there. Uh, yeah, I might want to evolve Caterpie before actually doing another box switch. Okay, so this is Misty. So at level 20, what I'm looking for to happen is I get very high rolls on Bubble, on Bubble, on Bite. So I can two hit both of her Pokemon. Both of them are gonna be damage ranges. That's a very poor roll. I actually probably should have attacked before using uh, Bite again, but we've just gone for it. Didn't get it. So now she's gonna use a Super Potion. I would rather she use a Super Potion on Staryu than Starmie, and she's only got one. So that's a really bad roll again. So she's using Water Pulse. Water Pulse can confuse you. Oh, well, that one killed. Uh, and I'm holding a Persian Berry, which heals confusion. But ideally, I would keep my Persian Berry, like, all the way through. I'm gonna move Bite over. That's a better roll. Hit it into yellow. Starmie is actually a harder range to get than Staryu. And I didn't get it. Oh, my word. Alright, so we beat Misty. Only just. But we got there. So, at level 19 with the lower special attack strats, because you're never getting those two hit ranges um, with lower special attack, it's better to not be level 20 and actually try and three hit both of her pokes to avoid hitting it into heal range, which is why the, the routes diverge there. Alright, now she gives me the TM for Water Pulse, which is excellent. Water Pulse is 60 power, 100 accuracy, and Confuse. And can Confuse. It's got a 30% chance to do that. Uh, but so that's going to be the primary move on War Turtle for a while. So just going to double Potion here to heal up. And then teach Water Pulse. I definitely swapped Bite into Slot 2. Going to get rid of Water Gun. So that seems a bit odd as well, that I get rid of Water Gun, given Water Gun has 40 power and Bubble has 20 power, and they're both Water-type moves. Uh, I actually don't know anybody else who does that. Uh, but the reason I do it is I like to use Bubble to weaken Pokémon later on. Because there's quite a few Pokémon when you're Blastoise and you're like level 40, that you can't weaken them unless you have a very, very weak move. And so it's very nice to have Bubble there. Okay, this is second rival fight. This is a very dangerous fight, as are uh, pretty much all of the rival fights for the, the rest of the run. The very dangerous move Pidgeotto has there is Sand Attack. So getting Quick Attack twice there, I mean, it hit itself in confusion, but it had to be using Quick Attack because it went first, is good. And now he's going to send out Bulbasaur, and this is where I need to use Mega Kick. Good. Good. Bad. I'm supposed to have Awakenings. You buy Awakenings and not para heals. I understand what I've done now. Yes, this makes total sense. Uh, so I'm gonna die. Awakenings cost a bit more than para heals. Yeah, you buy para heals later, but I've got the revive. Uh, we'll send that Caterpie. But that Mega Kick did enough damage that I can kill it with Bite. So I don't have to risk uh, hitting another Mega Kick. Which is why I lead with Mega Kick, because the problem with using Mega Kick first is it hits Bulbasaur into Overgrow, which is the grass equivalent of Torrent that I was explaining before. So it increases his grass type moves by 50% power, so his Vine Whip does a lot more damage. 
But the problem with using Bite First is A, Bite plus Mega Kick is not a guaranteed kill, but B, if you, if you use Bite and he picks Leech Seed turn one, then Leech Seed recovers his health and then Mega Kick's never going to kill. It's also better to be using the 100% accuracy move at the end because then you don't have to worry about healing and being at 10 health and being like, oh, I have to hit Mega Kick or heal. Which do I pick? Just knowing and having that safety of being able to use the 100% accurate move at the end. So, okay, losing my revive there is really bad. And the fact that I don't have awakenings is also really bad. I hope you can buy awakenings at Cerulean Mart. If you can't, this is going to be very awkward. Even if you can't, I want an awakening before Rival 3, which is before I go to Cerulean Mart. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. We'll have to figure something out along the way. So this is Nugget Bridge. Uh, Nugget Bridge, because I have high special attack, is actually going to be the easiest part of this run. So another thing about this run is there is no easy parts, except for Nugget Bridge. And even on Nugget Bridge, you can still very easily die. So a lot of Pokemon speedruns, it's like the early game is a bit dicey because things are kind of evenly balanced. So, you know, a mistime critical can, from a level three Pidgey, can, you know, cost you several minutes. And it, obviously in doing attempts, that would be a reset. I'm not going to continue this run after dying on Route 1. For a marathon run, it does not really matter that much. But yeah, in most runs, once you get past a certain point, which is usually about the third rival fight, the game is very, very easy because you're just one hitting a lot of Pokemon, as I am right now, which is why Nugget Bridge is an easy part. And when you're one hitting all of the Pokemon, there's really not much that can go wrong. But in this category, this is really the only part of the game where that's happening. So more Mega Kicks here on Oddish. Here we go. First miss. Pick Sweet Scent though. This one's only got Sweet Scent and Absorb. That's two misses. Okay. Because Mega Kick has low PP, I now cannot use Mega Kick. So now we're going to have to two hit it with Bite. Okay, got the flinch at least. So Bite has a 30% chance to flinch, like Water Pulse has a 30% chance to confuse. So I've only got two Mega Kicks. I need to save one for the Drowsy later on. There's going to be two more Oddish, and so I can only Mega Kick one of them. I am in Torrent now, but that's probably useless. I'm probably going to one-hit all of the relevant things anyway, whether I had Torrent or not. Not going to be able to find out because I'm definitely going to want to hit them with Torrent. Uh, I could Bubble here. I don't need to though. I'm just going to spam Water Pulse. Bubble kind of would be faster if you did all of the menuing properly because Bubble only has 6 characters whereas Water Pulse has 11 so the text is reduced. And it takes 1 frame for every character of text to load. Which is why I named my War Total just A. Just one character. And it's also why having the seven character name for both trainer and for rival is really slow because when it says you know pat paul got 224 dollars or whether that was that might have been 244 i'm not sure that's like six frames that i'm losing so for every 10 times that happens that's a second that i'm losing and so throughout the whole run having two seven character names is probably gonna, actually going to cost me a couple of minutes it does add up by the end Okay, so this is the fourth trainer. There are five trainers on Nugget Bridge, and then there's one kind of like prize trainer extra. But then there's still a few more fights after that. This Mankey is one that you could die to um, if you had bad stats, especially, because it can outspeed you if you don't have good speed. I do have good speed there. And given I have high special attack and torrent, it's going to one hit as well. If you don't have high special attack or torrent, it's actually more likely to kill with Mega Kick than Water Pulse because Water Pulse will only be like a 3 in 16 chance to be able to kill. But Mega Kick would be 75%, which is obviously a bit higher. I should explain damage rolls as well. So there are 16 different damage rolls that you can get when you use an attack. Usually the max roll is individual, but quite a few of the other ones are the same. So it'll be like something like, you know, five of the rolls might be 16 and then 10 of the rolls might be 18, and then there's one that does 20. And so the reason for that, again, is because of Pokemon flooring at every single calculation. 
So when you get a little bit lower, it gets significantly lower. It jumps straight away. And so when it's doing the calculations for the damage rolls, it's the first one is 100% of the damage, and then 99%, and then 98, 97, etc., down to 85. And so if the raw damage is, you know, 100, and then the next one is, oh no, 100 is not a good example. <laughs> if it's 50, and then the next one is 49.5, then it'll floor that to 49. And then there might be, you know, uh, stab, which is the same type effective bonus. Oh my god, I'm so cooked. I think that's what it is. Um, where, because I'm a water type Pokemon in War Turtle, when I use water type moves, they do 50% more damage. So that would multiply by 1.5. So then 50 times 1.5 would be 75 but 49 would be 73.5, and then it would floor to 73. Okay, so picking up this elixir here. You can actually fight either of these two hikers here. Little minute there on the spinner. So I walked one right and then one up, and then I ran one right. That forced him to be looking upwards, because that's his priority when I'm one tile away from him, and then I could walk down, and that was completely safe. That was actually really good. But yeah, you can fight either of the two hikers there. There's one on the left that has the Machop and the Geodude that I fought. There's also one down the bottom that just has an Onyx. It's actually faster to fight the guy with the Onyx, but because I'm doing this experience route, if I fight the Onyx, I will just miss out on level 33. Oh my goodness. Uh, before the fight where I fight Giovanni in Game Corner, and that's the one where I want to use the Rare Candies to evolve the Blastoise before, because that fight is actually quite dangerous. Uh, I should have checked my Water Pulse PP. I think I'm fine. Oh, I am not fine. I should not have used Water Pulse there. Okay, so I've got three left. Uh, that is fine if nothing bad happens. But if something bad happens, that is not fine at all. 17 health. Mm, yeah, this should be okay. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up, after this fight, a hidden Orin Berry. So an Orin Berry just restores 10 health. Which seems a bit useless, but uh, it is very useful to either increase my health by 10 and not 20 so that I can stay in Torrent, but it still be very high Torrent, or it's going to be useful in the Trainer Tower to restore 10 health because it's a held item that can activate. Alright, so this is the last Trainer here in this segment, I guess, before I get to Bill with the two Oddish. So I can't Mega Kick both the Oddish, so I'm going to bite this first one. Oh, I should have picked Water Pulse. Okay, it wouldn't have killed anyway. Water Pulse actually would have done more damage because I'm in Torrent. But I guess I don't actually have the Water Pulse BP, so I guess that's fine. But it wouldn't have killed anyway. I did not get a high roll. So I'm going to Mega Kick this one. Okay, that hit. That's good. So I've got one Mega Kick left. That's going to be for Drowsy. Hopefully that one hits. If it misses, I'm just going to have to use Bite again. Pidgey I can finish with Bite. Oh, I did not want to take more damage. <sighs> yeah, if I miss Drowsy, I may have to heal to avoid dying, which will not be good. Another thing I should mention is after some of those trainers, I'm actually bonking into them. That is on purpose. Uh, the way movement in this game works is if you're at a standstill and you're not on the bike, uh, you have what's called turn frames, where there are... I think it's six frames before you can actually start moving again, where you just turn on the spot. But if you're in fluid movement, those turn frames don't apply. So it's actually faster if you're facing a wall and you're about to start moving to bonk into the wall or the trainer or the person or whatever to initiate movement just for like one frame and then turn away. On the bike, there are no turn frames though, so... And the bike also actually gets stuck when you bonk on a wall or an object. It's like the complete opposite, and it's really, really tricky to actually switch between running movement and biking movement in this game. Okay, so now we're going to run back down, because this area is cleared now that I've talked to Bill, and he's given me the SS ticket. There's two more trainers that I have to fight before I have a heal on the SSN. So this guy has Machop and Drowsy. Machop will definitely die because I'm in Torrent, and the Drowsy I am worried about because I only have one Mega Kick. And the Drowsy has Hypnosis, I just remembered, and I have no Awakenings. 
Very good. Okay, so please hit Mega Kick. Okay, he did not pick Hypnosis, so I'm gonna go Bite. Please flinch. Good. I probably could've killed with Bubble there, but I'll just use Bite. It's harder to move diagonally through the menu, so the reason I probably should've picked Bubble there is because it's not super effective, so it would've saved that super effective text, but <laughs> I don't wanna use it and then it just lives on one health. I'm so sure it would've died, but I've never been in that scenario before, so I'm just like, no, just pick Bubble, it'll be fine. So I've got 10 health now, and because I'm in Torrent, I will definitely kill the Raticate on this next trainer with Water Pulse, I, and I have no Mega Kick, so I kind of have to anyway. Uh, the Raticate does have Quick Attack though, and if it picks Quick Attack and Criticals me, it will definitely kill me. But I'm not going to heal, because I need to be in Torrent to be able to one-hit it. Even if I healed, it could just like pick Hyper Fang, and then it crits, and then I die. Just gonna run out of the vision of that trainer there. And just fight this one. I think I still have two water pulses, so I can just water pulse them both. I could have just used bite on the Spearow, actually, because I have really good special attack. Uh, yeah, I've got two. Okay. Yep, no quick attack. Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to heal, get back all of my PP and health. So, very conveniently timed heal on the SSN. Given I'm out of both Water Pulses and Mega Kicks. Uh, and the next fight on the SSN, there are a lot of optional trainers you can fight here. I'm not going to do any of those. Uh, but the next fight is Rival 3. So Rival 3, his team is quite similar, except his Bulbasaur has evolved into an Ivysaur. So it is a lot more dangerous. Again, Pidgeotto has Sand Attack, really bad. I'm I'm kind of considering saving here before this fight because I do not have the revive. Uh, hang on. I'm going to make a detour and have a look in these trash. Nah, that's the wrong one. All right. Uh, this one? Chesto Berry. Okay, so that heals sleep. So I'm going to use that in lieu of having an awakening. Actually, I might attach it. Yeah, I'm going to equip it. Having the Petra Berry could actually help too. Okay, so I didn't use my Persian Berry, which is good. I can keep that for Trainer Tower, which is a bonus. I'm going to walk one wide here on purpose because the rival has to come down. So I'm going to let him just walk straight down because he walks a lot slower and then he'll get off camera quicker as well. So okay, on Pidgeotto here, I'm going to lead Bike. Bike has that 30% flinch chance just to try and get him to not pick Sand Attack. Oh, that's a crit, and it did not kill. If I'd picked Water Pulse, it would have killed. Fantastic. The thing with Ivysaur is you have to use two Mega Kicks compared to with Bulbasaur, usually Mega Kick plus Bite kills. Oh, Leech Seed, I'm switching. I'm just, I'm getting rid of the Accuracy Drop and Leech Seed. There's no way I'm continuing that. Let's... Sacrifice Spearow. I probably should have sacrificed Caterpie because it's lower level. It would have uh, died quicker. So it still dies in one hit, but it's just because Caterpie had less health. The HP bug would have gone down a bit quicker. Okay, good. Yeah, that's definitely another Mega Kick. Because I've equipped the Chesto, I can just wake up and I don't have to waste a turn using an Awakening. Good. Okay. Uh, because I'm not in Torrent, I have to Mega Kick the Raticate as well. Water Pulse is not going to kill. Good. And his last Pokemon is Kadabra. Kadabra is faster than me, and obviously a bit more dangerous than the Abra, but it loves to use Disable because it's like, oh, Mega Kick's gonna kill me. I will Disable that. I missed anyway. But I can just switch to Bite and then Bite will kill it. So that was, uh, it was good after I switched back in. It was very bad prior. Okay, and hopefully I can buy Awakenings at Cerulean Mart when I do the next Mart before... Any other fights? So this guy's going to give me the ETM for cut. And then I'm going to go 
Oh, no. Actually, I'm going to heal on the way out because I've lost three Mega Kicks from that fight. And I would like to use quite a few more in this next segment. Only having two is very low. And as you've already seen, Mega Kick can miss a lot. So having extras, even if I want to like only use three, having all five is very good. I'm just going to quickly duck back in here. This is a much faster heal than like using a Pokemon Center, for example. Because the animation is just much faster. And then we're going to leave the SSN. So next thing I'm going to do is trade Spiro for Farfetch'd. So the reason Farfetch'd is a very, very good Pokemon to have is you need a lot of Pokemon cycling through your party in order to evolve them or use them in different ways throughout the run, like trading them. So having as much free space as possible is very, very good. And Farfetch'd can learn both Fly and Cut. So I don't have to keep cycling or using two different HM friends for fly and cut so I can have an extra open space. Alright, so that will be nine. And did we have time for another yes. donation? Yep. yep. So we have ten dollars from Tim Trollgasm who says, Hi Worcester. Okay Tim. Alright. This will actually be the last Pokemon I get for a little bit. There won't be too many. Uh, until I get to uh, Blastoise will probably be the next Pokemon. The other thing I'm going to do here is pick up the Bike Voucher. So normally, I mean, what you might think I'm going to do is use Cut now that I've got Cut and Farfetch'd and go into the gym just below. That's why you need to get Cut is to go into Surge's gym, but I'm actually not going to do that. I could, but it is much riskier to fight Surge right now as Wartortle. I actually want to come back here as Blastoise to make Surge very free. And it's not necessary to beat him at the moment. The reason it would be faster to do it now is Surge allows you to use Fly, so you can fly to different places on the map without having to go back to them. Didn't want to get an encounter here. I already have Pidgey. You can get Meowth and Oddish, which I have neither of. I would probably have caught a Meowth if it showed up, but not an Oddish, because I want to get a high-level Oddish later on, because it is a stone evolution, which is very, very good. Rare candies are in very short supply in this run. There are a lot of Pokemon that you can catch. Say you catch like a level 30 Oddish, you could use a rare candy to evolve it into Gloom. And so you want lots of rare candies for Gala Pokes, but you also need to use a lot of them on your main poke on Blastoise. So I'm just going to teach Cut to Chiding real quick. My Farfetch'd. And then Cut into here. Pick up the bike voucher, and then we'll do that mart. If there are no awakenings there, I have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I'm actually, I'm like 50-50 on whether awakenings are actually available at this mart. I also could have so easily gone into the vermilion mart and done the exact same thing. But I just chose not to. Having an adventure. Alright, uh, I need to sell the nugget for money first. There are awakenings. Good news. Uh, I guess I'll just get four. Oh, I did not need six repels. My money is a bit short there. That'll be fine. I'll still have enough for the next segment, and I can just buy a few less items, a few less extras in Celadon. Okay, so now I have the bike. So the bike moves a bit faster. It's nowhere near twice as fast as running shoes. I think running shoes is eight frames per tile and bike is six. But you know, it's still enough of a difference that you always want to be on the bike where possible. And as mentioned, the bike does not have turn frames, but if you bonk into something, it disables your movement before you can move again. So you get like stuck to walls. So if you make any movement mistake, it just extrapolates really, really quickly. And almost the first thing you have to do after getting the bike is Rock Tunnel, which is like the hardest movement in the game. I'm gonna use Bite on this Bellsprout, probably won't kill. Yeah, I just didn't want to use Mega Kick there. It did have a chance to kill, 
I'll use Bite on the second Bellsprout, and it definitely will kill, because the second Bellsprout has a minus special defense nature, so it has less special defense. So Bite will kill it. We'll Mega Kick the Oddish again, though. Good. I did use that Chester Berry, so that's not equipped anymore. Uh, I don't think I should equip the Persian Berry back. I could equip the Petra Berry for a bit, but I'm going to equip the Black Glasses um, in the near future. So I think I'll just keep it open for now. There's a spinner here I'm just going to pause for. If he's looking up, which he is, just to see if he had spun uh, right before I got there. Given he didn't, I just waited for him to spin away and just went because on the bike you're fast enough to be able to do that. Just react pass. If you try to do that while walking, it's not fast enough. And if you try to do it while running, he will just automatically see you. But even though you would think biking probably makes a bit more noise than just running around. And it's certainly a lot faster. It doesn't attract their attention. I'm probably just going to double bite this Venom at Water Pulse isn't going to kill it, so i just use Bite to get the flinch chance again. Poison Powder, okay. Uh, I'm actually going to wait to heal that until I'm in Rock Tunnel and combine the menu with using Repels throughout Rock Tunnel. Because taking a bit more damage here probably shouldn't matter. Get up there. See, that's what I mean by getting stuck. Anyway, there's the Rare Candy. Cut this bush. I'm going to get a hidden super potion here. I, I probably don't need it, but having more healing items is always good. You can run out of healing items even like right at the end in Drainer Tower. So I will use Antidote. I have Petra Berry, but I'd rather just use the Antidote in case I need to use the Petra later. I've gone way past my repels. Usually the repels are at the bottom, but because I bought an extra one earlier, they're at the top because they didn't expire. So yeah, this is Rock Tunnel. Obviously, you can't actually see very well in here. You have very limited vision. Uh, it's kind of optional to get the HM for Flash to be able to light it up so you can see better. Obviously, if you know where you're going, you're not going to get lost. But not having the vision, especially with the sticky bike, means it is very likely I'm going to bump on many, many, many walls along the way. Jeez, that almost killed. I don't even think it's possible to one-hit that slowpoke. Okay, and this now expires the point where I am a higher level than the other experience route because this, this is where you would rare candy from 28 to 30. Ah, okay. So you're supposed to fight this trainer, but it would be faster to move up one tile and then talk to him. I hadn't explained that prior as well. So the reason it's better to talk to trainers instead of running in front of their vision is the little exclamation mark that pops up if you run in front of them. Whereas if you talk to them, it just initiates straight away. It's obviously less steps, and the exclamation mark isn't actually that long in this game. In other Pokemon games, it's significantly longer, and so it's much faster to talk to them, but I would rather that happening than get stuck on a wall or something. Okay, so this Oddish, I actually do not think I'm going to kill with Mega Kick, so I'm just going to use Bite on this Oddish. My attack is not very good. Uh, I got a really low roll on the first bite, so now I'm actually going to use Mega Kick. Oh no, I should have... I think if I miss this Mega Kick, I might die. I'm risking it. Okay, good. Very good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Vine Whip plus poison damage would have killed me there. Uh, no, I shouldn't have done this. I should have just combined this with the next menu. Because there's our repel's going to expire really soon. Like, here. Yeah. I could have just taken the extra few damage. But this is much lower health than I normally have here. Okay. Uh, again, this is a situation where you can fight a couple of different trainers. This one's only got one, and I don't need the extra experience anymore. For these pokes, I'm going to be using Bubble to kill them, because Bubble is still strong enough to be able to kill these Geodudes and Onyx and what have you. 
It's another reason why I prefer having bubble to water gun, because you could use water gun as well to con because the main reason you're doing this is to whoa, is to conserve water pulse BP. Uh, but bubble has less characters than water gun. So it's better to be using bubble. Yeah, I definitely should have um, combined the menus because I would have had torrent for Jigglypuff if I had done that. Because I'm one health off torrent right now. 25 out of 76 would be torrent. And the next trainer has a Jigglypuff that will be a range. It might live the water pulse, it might die. But I don't want to be too low so that I'm actually a chance of dying in this segment. Because there's still one more Mega Kick I need to hit. And I only have one left. Oh no, that's one too high. Okay, so this is the Jigglypuff trainer. <sighs> I do have Awakenings now, so even if it does live and puts me to sleep, it's not going to be that big a deal. Alright, I got the range anyway. Very good. So I might actually end up just getting quick attacks into Torrent, which would be nice to happen. Um, for the Raticate at the game corner would be when I next want Torrent. Okay, next trainer has Geodudes and Graveler again. I'm actually going to bite these Geodudes because bite is going to be a guaranteed kill because I have high special attack. And as I mentioned before, it's better to use moves that aren't super effective if they're going to kill just to avoid that super effective text. And so after this trainer, I'm going to be doing... There's another spinner up here. I'm going to be doing a bit of movement tech that you probably won't be able to really pay attention to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get off the bike and then run to force his movement to look in a particular direction, then put back on the bike and then pass him. And if I do it correctly, he will never hit me. If I do it incorrectly, he will always hit me. So here we go. He hit me. Uh, so what I did wrong there was I was just on the wrong line. I was just completely on the wrong line. It's not a big deal. He's just got three slow perks. So I'll just bite him. It'll give me extra experience, which will be entirely worthless. Oh, maybe not. It'll give me extra levels before Ekans. But I'm going to use those rare candies from 33 to 36 anyway. So the experience isn't going to really matter. He will give me more money, though. And given I was short on money, that could be helpful. I have no idea how much money he gives me. So I will actually pay attention to that here. But yeah, I want it to be one row further to the right. Nine sixty. That's actually quite a bit. All right. Got to hug the wall here. I'm just gonna bonk on purpose. If you're not at exactly like max of rounds, those two trainers will hit you. So if you go down like one tile too early, you'll just fight an extra trainer. And I've already fought enough extra trainers. Okay, this is the last oddish. Hopefully, this is the last mega kick I have to hit. Good. So that was five out of five mega kicks on this segment, I think, which is actually very nice. No quick attack there. Hopefully the Braticate just picks quick attack. Alright, and we are out of Rock Tunnel. We can see again. Do not want to be taking the ledges as faster with the bike to avoid the ledges. So I'm just going to enter this Pokemon Center and then just immediately go out. The reason for that is, as I mentioned, I don't have access to fly yet. 
I can get the HM for fly, but I can't actually use it until I beat Surge. But by entering that center, it's going to flag the teleport point to Lavender City. And so I'm going to teleport to Lavender later on. Because I want to make a quick detour to Celadon to get the HM for fly and, I mean, story elements and quite a few things as well. Very useless critical. If a critical is not going to save you uh, time, it's actually worse to get a critical hit. This can pick Quick Attack 2. It did not. Quick Attack would put me into Torrent, and I need it to one-hit the Raticate. This is this is the kind of thing that always happens with this game. If you're like one hit away from Torrent, nothing will ever attack you. But if you're already in Torrent, everything will attack you. It just always seems to happen that way. Okay, so as I mentioned, there's quite a few things to do in Celadon City. The first thing I'm going to do is pick up the free Eevee. Just up the top of the city here. So Eevee is a Pokemon that you always get. It's very, very simple. You just pick up a Pokeball and you have an Eevee. And it's actually two Pokemon because Eevee is a stone evolution as well. Alright, that is now 10 Pokemon. And in case you're just tuning in, it's 60 Pokemon that I need by the end of the run. So we're only a sixth of the way there. So I'm going to need quite a bit of money um, in a little bit. First I'm going to pick up this coin case. Coin case is very necessary in order to buy a couple of Pokemon. Need the coin case to get coins, use the coins to buy Pokemon. It's also the reason why Fire Red is better than Leaf Green for any category where you have to catch 60 pokes, because the prices for the Pokemon are different between the games, and so in Leaf Green you actually need more coins to buy the two Pokemon you want to get. And so it's faster to buy coins, but I need exactly 680, so I'm actually going to pick up 180 like this, and then buy 500. Hello? Pick up those 40. Because you can only buy 50 or 500 at a time. So now I have more money than I'm expecting. I might buy an extra card spec when I'm in Celadon. But yeah, I wanted, Celadon is where you can buy X items. So I want to buy everything in one trip. No quick attack. So what's going to happen now is he's going to pick Scary Face. So now he's going to be faster than me. And the Zubat's going to be faster than me. And now they're going to use lots of damage. Yep. Every single time with this game. Now I have to heal because Hyper Fang will kill me. <sighs> Every single time with this game. So yeah, now the Zubat can actually confuse me as well because it's faster than me. Okay, at least it missed. At least it missed. Ah. <sighs> That's actually quite infuriating. But welcome to Pokemon Speedrunning. Okay, so you just had to fight this guy to get the switch behind him. This is a really common thing to like double talk to that switch because it looks like there's a yes no dialogue and you're like mashing A to say yes, but there actually isn't one. If you just keep mashing A, you'll just talk to the switch again. But yeah, as I mentioned, I need lots of money, which is why I'm picking up a lot of hidden items here that I'm actually just gonna sell later on. At the mart. Alright, so here's the black glasses. So there's not actually many held items you can get that are useful in this game. They just didn't really put them in in an accessible way, but the black glasses are one of them. So the black glasses increase dark type moves by 10%, which means I have bite till the end of the game, so that will do a little bit more damage. I would much prefer to have Mystic Water to increase water type moves, but you just cannot afford Mystic Water. It's just way too much of a time sink. So just going to have to deal with the black glasses. And I mean, they're not useless. It is nice to have the power boost to bite. It just would be much nicer to see water moves because you use them far more frequently. 
I have to fight this trainer to get the lift key. Uh, I'm gonna skip the max ether there to the left. I think I'll be able to make it on PP just by using the elixir. Getting the max ether there for a bit of safety for water pulse PP is an option, but not one that I'm gonna take. These spinners are actually quite fast in this game, which is nice. In the original, uh, they are very, very, very slow. Imagine the walking speed of this game, but even slower. Go down to four. Calcium, that's the last one that I'm going to get for money. And then I've just got to fight these two trainers, and then we'll be able to evolve the Blastoise and then fight Giovanni. So normally I am level 31. Level 31 for the Ekans? Is that right? I think that's right. But because I've got that extra experience, obviously I'm 32 already. So this Ekans will be a damage range because I'm not in Torrent. If I was just in Torrent, this would be so much better. But I'll be 33 for the second Ekans. At 33, because as I mentioned before, that's a power increase because of the level jump from two to three. That one should definitely die. This one could definitely go either way. But I'm gonna go Water Pulse. Again, you could go Bite for the flinch chance, but I'd rather go Water Pulse for the kill chance. Didn't get it. Unfortunately, I'm just gonna be short of 33 here. It would be nice if I got it and I could just evolve to Blastoise before this trainer. But no, I'm gonna have to fight him. Because if you use a rare candy, it doesn't give you the full level. It gives you the experience to the next level. So if I used a rare candy there, it would give me like 300 experience. Not really useful. Oh, so I don't have 33 for the seconds either. Because it comes out first, of course. I'll have 33 for the Arbok, but that's not going to be helpful. All right, I got that seconds anyway. So the Arbok's not going to die in one hit. So I am going to bite the Arbok, uh, the Arbok in order to try and get the, uh, the flinch. It can't do that much damage, but it can status me. It's got Glare, which will paralyze, and it's also got Poison Sing, so it can poison me too. Which neither are that big a deal, but it's an extra item that I have to use that I don't want to. So now I'm going to do a pretty decent menu. I'm going to do a few things here. We are going to equip black glasses. Use those rare candies to level 36. As I mentioned a few times, level 36 is when you evolve. Another thing about this game is there are quite a few like cutscenes when you're using items. Like here, when that screen's going black, there's actually a cutscene that's trying to play there. But I'm holding B to skip it. But basically, it just shows you using the uh, the rare candy on War Turtle. And did we have time for one yes. more donation? Yep. yep. So we have $50 from Wingman saying, Farming Simulator, please. So that brings that donation goal up to 14% complete. So if you want to see some farming, make sure you get those donations in. Yeah, then use the elixir there. Now I'm going to pick up this netball. Uh, so there are a lot of balls at this point of uh, the Pokemon series, and there's more later on that have kind of different properties from just the normal Pokeball. Great Ball, which just increases your chance a bit. Ultra Ball, which increases your chance a bit more. Uh, but the netball increases your chance by three times if it's a water or a bug type Pokemon. So a bit more unique and specified. The thing with this game is it makes them so hard to find any of these special balls. You can't buy them anywhere. You can only find these hidden ones. And the only hidden ones you can find is the net ball here, left of Giovanni, and the nest ball to the right of Giovanni. They just put them both in the same spot. All right, so Kengas got here could be a bit tricky. I do not want to see him pick Mega Punch. Okay, Tail Whip. I won't die to a Mega Punch at minus one. I should be able to get in three water pulses. Confused. Okay, we're good. Can use Bite there to finish, actually. But yeah, so that's actually quite a tricky fight because Giovanni, unlike a, like almost all of the other trainers that you're fighting in this game, have zero IVs on all of their Pokemon. But Giovanni has 
30 on all of his Pokemon. Nearly perfect. Oh, please turn around and get the item. Thank you. Now, escape rope. Just going to run over here. And now I'm going to buy the two prize Pokemon. So here's Clefairy. That's 12. And then no. Uh, oh, that was actually nice. I thought I was going to get blocked by that Nidoran there. They, those Pokemon are very often trolls. Oh, see like that. Uh, I'm going to enter the left here. And now we're going to do the, the big shop. So I'm going to buy quite a few stones here. I'm going to buy just as much as I can possibly use. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee I will use all of these stones. First, I'm going to sell all those items from before. Uh, two PP ups. Nuggets. And calcium. But yeah, so I'm going to buy one fire stone. Two thunder stones. And a leaf stone. I can use two leaf stones, but I'm going to pick up another leaf stone to avoid buying to save a bit of money. And now here, uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to buy here. I haven't decided the amounts. Uh, I've talked to the wrong guy, so I'm not going to buy any of those. We're going to buy, I reckon, five X speeds. 25 special. I'm going to buy three guard specs, which is an extra. And I should still have enough for seven X accuracies. Yep, and I've got a bit extra, so I should be able to buy an extra Ultra Ball as a result. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take the elevator back down. It's faster to take the elevator from floor five, but not to floor four. So take the stairs up to four, because I have to go to four and five. The elevator from five. One of the things that I've, there are so many weird oddities about this game. So on that menu there, where you're selecting the floor of where to go to, you can't hold a directional input. You have to press all of the inputs individually. So you have to press down four times to get from five to one. But in Silphco, where they have the exact same menu, except it goes to like 11 floors, you can hold a direction. I just have no idea why, but anyway. Then there's the HM for fly. As I mentioned, I cannot use it yet. So immediately after getting this, instead of trekking all the way back to Lavender, I'm going to use teleport with Abra. And now we're going to go into the Pokemon Tower, or Lavender Tower, and we're going to fight a rival again. So there's actually a couple of different strats you can use for this fight. I guess the kind of safer route is to use a guard spec to prevent... The guard spec prevents any of your stats from going down, so it protects you from sand attack from Pidgeotto here. But I'm not going to do that. I am just going to use an X special. Hope he doesn't pick it, which he didn't. And then go Water Pulse. Okay, I'm going to lead Water Pulse on Ivysaur instead of Bite. Because I think Bite might put him into Overgrow, and then he'll be able to kill me with Overgrow. That's actually already put him into Overgrow. Oh, I'm in Torrent. Of course it did. Uh, I think he's going to kill me. So I'm going to switch to Eevee. Maybe Eevee can tank. Yep. Uh, where are Awakenings? Yep. I was in perfect torrent. For some reason I was looking at it thinking it was one off, but no, that's exactly one third. Um, but now I don't have the X special. I'm wondering whether I should use it at all. Bite will still kill here. Hmm. 
I don't know if I outspeed Kadabra. Surely I outspeed Kadabra. I want Torrent for the next section, so I really don't want to heal. Surely I outspeed Kadabra. Yeah, okay, good. Um, it's a bit lower torrent than I would have liked. I would have liked if I had um, the second bite flinch, flinched uh, Gyarados, and I'd stayed at about 22. Because I could, I could easily die to quick attacks at this amount of health. And I still don't have a revive. So in Pokemon Tower, you can get encounters here, but I'm not using a repel. Because Ghastly is very, very common here. I try to always get a Ghastly. And then use a repel. Can also get a Cubone here, but given Eevee is dead, I don't know how I would weaken Cubone right now. Alright, there's the encounter. Haunter? No, no. I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to try. The last time I got a Haunter, I did catch it, but its catch rate is so, so low. It is not worth trying. I really thought that would have been safe. Okay, I've hit another spin up. I was trying to pause at the end of the cycle, but I, apparently I paused, like, just before the cycle happened and turned on that frame. Uh, I'm just going to use Bite. I, I'm pretty sure Bubble would have killed, but to avoid the super effective text. But I just can't remember with that spinner because that's... I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've hit this spinner since I've been doing runs. This one I do have to bite, but I can bubble the other two. But yeah, I'll be fine for a while with this amount of torrent, but there are two uh, Pokemon with quick attack right at the end of Pokemon Tower, and dying here would be an absolute tragedy. I still don't have Ghastly, do I? No, I don't. I don't have Ghastly. But yeah, I'm trying to conserve Water Pulse PP as much as possible, which is why I would like to be using Bubble. I only need enough to the end of the tower though, so I'll definitely be fine. I actually could have used Water Pulse on the spinner before. I'm sure I could have used Bubble. There used Bubble as well. Okay, so I mentioned before with the IVs, so a lot of trainers in Pokemon series games that have, like, near-perfect status to have near-perfect IVs, so like the champion fight or whatever, um, in a lot of games, will actually have 30 IVs on all of their pokes and not 31. Cubone. Still no Ghastly. Okay, I'm going to try and catch Cubone. I don't know how I'm going to weaken this, though. With, what, Clefairy? Does Clefairy even have an attacking move? I don't know. It might just kill Clefairy as well. Yeah, it's going to kill Clefairy. Oh, it did not. Uh, Pound? Okay. I just need to weaken it like a tiny little bit to increase the, the catch chance. That's actually probably not enough, but uh, let's throw the Great Ball. See what happens. All right, let's go Clefairy. That's a nice, a nice another bonus, but I still do not have Ghastly. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, they usually have 30 IVs. So like, you know, Cynthia as a champion has 30 IVs on all of her folks and not 31. But randomly, this wild ghost Marowak has all 31s. It is the perfect Pokemon, just for no reason. I cannot understand why that is the case. But so without Torrent, you actually do not one-hit this Marowak because it's always got perfect stats. And given I don't have good balls, it's not worth trying to catch that Marowak. Uh, this is a case where it's actually faster to walk in front of the trainers instead of going up and talking to them because these trainers, when you defeat them, actually walk out 
And so, again, for the camera positioning, it's better for them to actually be able to walk straight lines out as much as possible. Can still get Ghastly on this top floor. I, I really want Ghastly. I might hunt for it if I don't get it before I actually get to the end of Pokemon Tower, because uh, there are very few steps left in Pokemon Tower. I think I'll at least get one encounter, and if it's not Ghastly, maybe I'll just leave. Because the other thing that could happen, of course, is I end up dying to Quick Attack, and I have to do all of Pokemon Tower again. How many Water Pulses do I have? Six? So that'll leave me with three afterwards. And I think that's the exact amount I want. One, two, three. Yep, that'll work. So that train is nice and easy. It's this last one who's got the double quick attack. So they've got a Rattata and a Raticate. The last run I did of this game before I came to this event, I was in a much better position than this, and they both quick picked quick attack and got criticals, and I died. But so if the first Radatar picks quick attack, I will heal before the Raticate. I just will have to. Which will be awful, because then it won't pick quick attack, and then I will not be in Torrent. Because that's how this game works. And I really, really need Torrent before the next segment, which is going to be Fighting Surge. Do not pick Quick Attack. Very good. Okay. I still don't want this one to pick Quick Attack either. Okay. Um, I am going to heal before I go into Surge's Gym. I'm going to use a potion. I actually probably should have just used a potion there, because I would still be in Torrent. But... I didn't. Uh, so I said I was going to hunt for Ghastly. We'll go for one encounter. Ghastly! So I'm going to switch to Farfetch'd here. Ideally, this Ghastly uses Curse, which actually lowers... Like, it gets rid of half of its health. Spike, whatever. I'm going to use Peck. So it can't actually damage Farfetch'd because it's a normal type until it picks Curse. I'm just going to throw balls from here. Again, you increase the catch rate just by doing a little bit of damage. There we go. Beautiful. So now we're at 15 couple of nice bonuses in this run. So my poke count actually feels pretty decent. Alright, talk to this guy, Mr. Fuji, and then he's going to give me the poker flute. So now I don't have to worry about awakenings anymore, which I don't think I ever used an awakening after I ended up buying them. But it is still faster to, if I get put to sleep to use awakenings than the poker flute, because the poker flute has a really long animation. But yeah, so now I'm going to go back and fight Surge. So the route can divert here as well. If I had Torrent after the Celadon section, before I went into Pokemon Tower, I would have fought Surge straight away. Because, you, as I mentioned before, you just really want Torrent for Surge. The extra levels don't actually make a big difference at all. Okay, I'm actually going to pick up this Citrus Berry over here too. Not likely that will be useful, but I'm going to pick it up anyway. Just for a bit of safety. Nice. NPC moved out of my way. Alright, and now we're going to do the very infamous trash cans at Surge's Gym. So, the switches can just be in any of these 15 cans. You just have to check them all. And then once you get the first one, the second one can be in any of the adjacent cans. Uh, I'm going to wait for this guy to move and then use the potion. Uh, so this is another technique for uh, getting past spinners. If you open the bag, it resets their timer. And so you can always pass them after doing this. I should have turn-framed, but I didn't. 
Still haven't found the first one. There's the first one. Okay. I am going to save. And so if I get the wrong second can, I'm just going to reload the save. Now, I have never done this in a run before. Almost every other runner does it. Usually I just, I wing it. If you get the wrong second one, it resets and you have to check all the first ones. The main reason I am saving for this at this event right now is just so I have a save in case the game crashes so that I won't go back to right at the start of the game. Nobody heard that. Uh, got to hold... B! 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 Do not press A. Okay, so it's going to be the one below, obviously. There it is. Do we have time for a couple of donations? Yes, we do. We have $40 from Skelliff, going towards a Final Fantasy X-2 incentive. Uh, saying, loving the detail in the runs, legend. And a $35 anonymous donation, going towards Spyro Year of the Dragon, um, setting Spyro's colour to black. Um, pink is still in the lead, though, by $5. And that does put us over $21,000 raised for Game on Cancer. Alright, very good. So, uh, there are a few Pokemon here that I could be using, like these Pikachus, I could be using Bite on, but their ability is static, which means when you make a contact move, they can paralyze you, and Bite is a contact move, so I do not want to be doing that. I will bite this Voltorb though, but then the Pikachu and the Raichu, I'm going to use Water Pulse on. I'm also going to swap Water Pulse's position here, because... The next thing I'm going to do is, before any other trainer battles, is I'm going to teach Surf, and I'm going to teach that over Mega Kick. So the reason I wanted to potion before this fight is these Pokemon also have Quick Attack, but none of them used it, which is good though. I would rather stay at this health. Alright, and that is Surge Down. Trash Gens were not very good there, but... It's not really that big a deal. They can be way worse if you don't save. I mean, you can spend an infinite amount of time here if you don't save before you ever get the trash cans. I did not teach Fly to Farfetch'd, I just realized. I should have done that in the menu... Uh, hello? In the Pokemon Tower. I should have also... Oh, it's because I never repelled. That's why I never did this. But yeah, uh, I should have evolved both Clefairy and Eevee. Yeah, usually you would repel, teach fly, and evolve both Clefairy and Eevee at the same time. But because I didn't get Ghastly until the end, which has never happened before, uh, I never actually did that menu. I should have then done it if I had realized before, uh, when I used the patient, when I was skipping past those trainers. So you could evolve uh, Eevee into any of Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon. Because I'm not using any Water Stones in this run, it is better to never get Vaporeon. Flareon and Jolteon, because you are buying both Thunder and Fire Stones, is a toss-up between which way you want to go. I pick Jolteon though, because Jolteon has higher speed. And there are rare situations where Blastoise can die. And having another Pokemon that has high speed can be helpful, because speed is what determines whether you're guaranteed to be able to run away from opponent Pokemon. Oh, well, wild Pokemon, I should say. If your speed isn't higher, uh, your chance of running away is not 100%, and it's 50-50, it's but then it increases the more chances you do it. Alright, so now with the Poker Flute, we're going to wake up Snorlax. Snorlax is another Poker, it's like, it would be great to catch this, but its catch rate is just far too low, and I only have Poker Balls to be able to catch it. So it's just not worth even attempting, and I just run away. It would be great if I had the Master Ball at this stage, I would always use it on Snorlax if I did. Instead, I'm just going to run away. There's a couple of spinners here afterwards, I have never done this movement correctly. It's very, very difficult to be able to just get past them. That was perfect. Beautiful. Um, yeah. If there's any movement tech in a Pokemon game, you get a clap. That's probably the it. There's, uh, there's not that much really going on in the movement. But yeah, going to get that rare candy and also going to pick up this Max Alexa. If you hold B on Cycling Road, it actually stops you, which is what I do there to get those hidden items. And there's like no other way to get them. But okay, so now I'm going to enter the Safari Zone. So the Safari Zone is one of the big make or break parts of this run. Because obviously, 
given I'm catching 60 Pokemon, I would like to catch a lot of Pokemon in the Safari Zone. However, in the Safari Zone, catching Pokemon is the most random thing because you cannot weaken the Pokemon and they can all run away from you. There are a few Pokemon that I need in here and then a few Pokemon that I want. So all I really need is both the Nidoran lines. So either two Nidoran males or Nidoran male and Nidoran female. That's all I really need. But I mean, everything else I want. Great job, Raimon. Well done. Ran away straight away. So throwing a rock increases their chance to run away, but it also increases their catch rate. So it's only worth doing against specific Pokemon. So I only throw the rock at Rhyhorn, Execute, and then some of the really rare pokes. All right, that's Nidoran male. That's 18. Uh, the Pokemon that can appear in the different rooms in this run vary as well. So in this room, I would like to see Doduo. I'm also getting a lot of items in the Safari Zone. Doduo or, I mean, Nidoran female would be great too. The reason two Nidoran males works, as well as a Nidoran male and a female, is you can trade a Nidoran male, male for a Nidoran female. Nidoran females are very much, they're far less common. Yeah, so I'm just going to catch this one. It would be better to be able to skip the trade, but... Nidorans are extremely good Pokemon for catches because it's rare candy and then they evolve and then Moonstone and they evolve again. So you really do want both lines. This is the easiest Pokemon to catch in the Safari Zone, by the way. It's breaking out of this many balls. So that's not a new Pokemon because I've already caught a Nidoran. So that doesn't update my total. Still sitting at 18. Okay, so here... I guess I'd like to see Paris. I'd really like to see Execute at some stage as well. I do not need another Nidoran. Uh, I'm going to hunt in this area until I get one of either Doduo or Venonat. Because I don't have either of them. So the way the, the kind of encounter tables work is two of the common pokes. Oh, Venomoth. Alright. I'll throw a rock at this. This is a rare poke. So the rare pokes alter, flat again. And the common pokes alter as well. So if I catch one of the common pokes, I need a Reno. Should I even try? I guess I should not. I'll try. This will save me a rare candy if I can catch it. Because I won't have to evolve one of the Nidorans. It makes catching the second Nidoran look like a complete waste. Because this is kind of the more ideal way to do, if you're doing the trade, is to catch a Nidoran male and a Nidorino. Because then you can evolve the Nidorino, but then trade the Nidoran male for the female, and then do the full line over there. I still want either Doduo or Venonat. No, please give me Doduo or Venonat. So Venonat is a better poke to get, because it can be traded as well. But I... Tauros. So Tauros is uh, an extremely rare. No surprise that that fled. Doduo, okay. So, Venonat is better to get because you get the trade, but you can catch Venonat after Safari Zone, whereas you can only get Doduo here. So, it can be better to get Doduo if you then get Venonat in Berry Forest. Okay. That's 20. And now I'm going to leave this area, and in the next area, I'm going to grind for one of Rhyhorn or Paris. And I'm still waiting for Execute. Execute you can get in any area, and because Execute is also a stone evolution, very good Pokemon to get. Again, you can get Execute in Berry Forest as well, but I would rather not rely on that. I would rather get it in Safari Zone. So what I'd like to see is Execute first, and then we can get Rhyhorn or Paris. I would prefer Paris. Paris, good. So I guess I'm not going to hunt for Execute now and just hope I get it in Berry Forest. So Paris is better because Paris is actually a candy poke here. And so what I mean by that is if I give it one rare candy, it will evolve. It evolves at 24. And it, that's also why it's better to get Paris in this area 
So all of the commons you can get in two different areas, but the Paris in the area prior is level 22, so it's not a candy poke. Alright, there we go. 21. My poke count 21 is actually pretty nice. I do hate that I don't have Execute or Venonat though. So now I'm going to pick up the gold teeth and surf later on. I also get revives here as well. So I'm not teetering on the brink of death like I was before. Get the HM for surf, which is obviously going to be my main attacking move now. Surf has 95 power and 100 accuracy, so it increases my power input by output, I should say. Um, by more than 50% over Water Pulse, so huge and there's no, no better move for Blastoise for the game. Back into the Mart here and now I can buy Ultra Balls. Uh, I'm going to sell the Protein first. Yep. And I'm just going to buy as many as I can. I think I've got extra money so I can buy 12. Yep. Normally you can only buy 11 there if you do everything. I guess buy the book. Oh, come on. Get over there. Go to the Warden's house, exchange those gold teeth for strength. Now, strength you only get use outside of battle when you beat Erica, and I have obviously skipped Erica, I didn't even mention her. She's supposed to be the fourth uh, gym leader, but she's a grass type trainer. I don't want to fight her until I get the TM for Blizzard. If I could, I would teach strength and push that boulder there, because that's another rare candy. And as I mentioned, rare candies are very, 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 very good. This is a spinner. Okay, good. Did not spin. I'm going to teach Surf here. Because this will be the bag manip that I mentioned before. So now he can't spin during these... Uh, until 32 frames has passed. So he won't be able to spin until I get past him. I'm going to fight this trainer. And so this is another one that Torrent's really good for. Uh... <laughs> This health could actually be absolutely awful. So I got that orange berry before and I've got the citrus. I want one of them for the trainer tower. But so what you can do is use the orange berry here to stay in like really, really high torrent and do the best strat for Koga. The thing is, I'm going to get a level up before Koga. And what I'm expecting to happen is it's going to level up and give me three more health, which is going to put me to 30 out of 119. And so if I used an orange berry, I would be 40 out of 119, which is not torrent. 39 is torrent. And 40 out of 120 is torrent, but 40 out of 119 is not. And 30 is too low torrent to be able to do the best strat against Koga. Yep. <sighs> okay. So that's not going to work. So instead, I am... I guess I'm going to Super Potion. Do it here, this is another spinner. So obviously do it here to get the bag manip again. And so we're just going to do the high health strats. Because Weezing would do more than 30 damage to me. If I could get to... 35, I would definitely be safe. But I, I just can't do it. So instead, I'm going to have to use an X special on Muck. The reason this is much worse is Muck has Minimize and can increase its evasion, and then I can just be missing it for ages and ages. Good end special. So I'd like to see Acid Armor. No, I would not like to see Minimize. That is very bad. Okay, got one hit. This will be a two hit. Okay, it didn't poison. Poison there actually probably would have been good because I would have been in Torrent by the time I got to Weezing. And if, I might, if I'm in Torrent and I use the X special, I won't get the Weezing. But in this case, I'm not going to because I'm not in Torrent. So I'm going to lead with Bite. Again, flinch chance. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh. Yeah, alright, that's Koga down. 
Could have gone much worse. Could have gone much better. I'm just annoyed about the torrent. And I got plus two on the next level up. If I'd gotten plus two on the one before, it would have been perfect. Uh, just how this game works. Alright, so now that I've beaten Koga, I'm going to do the biggest grind of this run. I'm going to fly back to Pewter City. First thing I'm going to do is get the old Amber, which I'm just going to be able to revive later on for Aerodactyl. It's just another, I guess, free Pokemon. That's just way more consistent than catching and a little bit faster too. But then, now that I've got Ultra Balls, I'm going to go back into Viridian Forest. And so as I mentioned, I absolutely need a level 3 Pikachu to do this run. It is just not possible without a level 3 Pikachu. And the chance of encountering a level 3 Pikachu is just 4%. There is also a 1% chance you can encounter a level 5 Pikachu. In my time running this category this year, I have encountered more level 5 Pikachus than level 3 Pikachus. But yeah, this could be I am sitting here for 20 minutes. No exaggeration. I think even in my PB slash the record, this took about 8 minutes to get the level 3 Pikachu to show up. So the other thing is I don't have a Weedle yet. Here's Weedle. Mm, level four. Mm, yeah, right, I'll catch it. So you're just gonna chuck Ultra Balls. Obviously Blastoise can't weaken Weedles anymore. Good. So now I'll be able to evolve that into Kakuna and Beedrill as well. I would have much preferred that be level three because there's a pretty decent chance I encounter a Kakuna before I encounter a Pikachu. And I would like some more level threes. There's a Metapod. So again, if I had a level three Caterpie, I would catch this. But as it stands, that's useless because my Caterpie is level four. If I do encounter a level three Caterpie now, especially, and probably Weedle too, I will catch it. Yeah, all right, I'm going to catch this just because I want more level threes. I probably only want one more, because I've got Pidgey. This would be the third, and I'm definitely getting either Rattata or Mankey. 100% getting either Rattata or Mankey. I definitely won't catch another Weedle. I might consider another Caterpie. Mm, yeah, not sure. Yeah, I think I will catch a Caterpie if it shows up at level three. Here we go. So this is the kind of thing where it's, you can't predict what's going to happen for the encounters. So I look like a bit of a fool in what I've done in this run, catching a level 4 Caterpie and then a level 3 Caterpie and running away from the Metapod. And also things like in the Safari Zone, capturing two Nidoran males. One of those Nidoran males is now going to be entirely useless because I caught a Nidorino afterwards. But yeah, I have everything I want here now. I won't catch any more level 3 Caterpies. I've got enough. So now all I want is that level 3 Pikachu. And so the reason the level 3 Pikachu is entirely necessary for this run is it's for the Trainer Tower. And it's why all of these level 3s are necessary. So the way the Trainer Tower works in this game is it scales towards your level. So if you enter with a level 57 Blastoise, all of their Pokemon are level 57. And none of your other Pokemon are level 57. So once they kill Blastoise, it's just kind of over. But if you enter with all level 3s, please, yes. Yes, beautiful. Okay. That was actually pretty fast. I'm going to throw the Nest Ball at it. Nest Ball increases catch rate uh, based on how low a level it is. Because Pikachu's got a bit lower of a catch rate than Caterpie or Weedle. Better to save it for Pikachu. Okay, that is 23. But yeah, so all of them are going to be level 3. As I'm going to enter with all level 3 Pokemon. And that is both faster and way more consistent, even though it's going to be a bit of a ragtag team. Uh, and I guess you'll see why a bit later on. Just going to duck into Diglett's Cave to get a Diglett here. It is very likely that I encounter a Diglett. You can also encounter a Dugtrio. If I do, I'll probably try and catch the Dugtrio as well, but I really just want a Diglett. Yeah, Diglett, good. Just going to chuck balls at this too. So the reason it's much faster is because at level 3, the HP bars go down much, much quicker. And that actually saves quite a significant amount of time. Okay. Whoop. 
please, please, just exit. And then now that I've uh, I've got fly, I don't need teleport anymore. So now I'm going to trade that Abra that I got from before for Mr. Mine. That's going to put me at 25. My poke count is actually pretty solid at the moment. If I can get one of Execute or Venonat in Berry Forest, I'll be very happy with my poke count. This is another oddity about this game. This screen here, after a trade, you can't clear with B. For whatever reason, you have to use A to clear this screen. I have on many occasions been sitting there mashing B for just like, you know, 10 seconds, being like, why is the game not moving? All right, so now fly back to Pallet Town. I'm gonna use my mom to heal me, again, faster than using a Pokemon Center. Get all of my health back and also my PP. And then we're gonna head down to Cinnabar. And there's a lot of things in Cinnabar. So there's gonna be quite a few caches along the way here. And then also gonna get a few uh, items in the mansion. First things first though, we have to surf down there. And on the water, I'm going to encounter a tentacle. Very rare, but if the tentacle is over level 35, oh, sorry, level 30, I can evolve it. He's <laughs> level six. I can't even weaken this with bubble. I have to use a netball. It needs to be level eight for me to be able to use bubble to weaken it. So normally I would weaken it and then throw an ultra ball, but because I can't weaken it, I'm just gonna throw the netball for the increased catch rate. And then when I get Psyduck later on, I am not going to use the netball. That's usually what I would save it for. Okay, now I've got Tentacle. We will Repel. I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? Yep. Repels are so much higher up than I'm used to because I bought an extra one. Uh... Just gonna duck into the left side here. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted, but that's fine. Repel actually probably would have worn off if I didn't do that. Uh, I'm going to use another Repel instantly in Pokemon Mansion. I do want a lot of encounters in here. But the encounters are better on the bottom floor than on the top floor. I probably actually should have taken a few steps and then used the Repel, because it wears off just before the bottom floor, but eh, it's not a big deal. The main difference is just that... You can get Radita as well. You can get Radita on the bottom floor as well, but you can't get Dittos until the bottom floor. And it takes its encounter chance from Radita. So it's 10% for Ditto on the bottom floor, and Radita goes from 15 to 5. And I don't want Radita because I want to catch a level 3 Radita, not a level 26 or whatever they are here. Growlithe. Growlithe is perfect. It's a stone evolution, so it's the one I want the most here. Gonna use bite. Good, good, good. Question for speedrunner, if I may. Yes. How many rare candies do you need across the whole run, and does the amount change based on your encounters? Yes, the amount does change based on the encounters that you get. Unfortunately, the last candy pokes that you can get is in Victory Road, which is where you want to like get your 60th Pokemon. So you kind of have to guess a little bit. But if you don't have that many like candy pokes at any stage, then you can skip a few candies because you think, oh, these are going to be worthless. I got a 5% Radita. I am not going to catch this. I want a level three. Um, but yeah, so especially there's one in Silphco that you, you have to backtrack a pretty significant amount in order to get. I'm gonna use Bubble on this coughing. Bite can kill it if it's got really bad stats. So wild Pokemon have random stats. So you don't actually know how much damage you're going to do. Um, Bite would not have killed that, but whatever. This is another one that I like to have bubble for. Uh, but yeah, but because I have quite a few candy pokes in this run, I definitely will be getting that Silphco candy. And like I mentioned, so in Victory Road, you can be getting like Zubat and Geodude. And then if you don't have the rare candies to evolve them, and you really want the rare candies, it can be absolutely awful. Because backtracking from Victory Road to like all the way back to Silphco is... Horrific. Absolutely horrific. 34... I'm gonna water pulse this. I feel like Surf might kill it. Yeah, Surf actually might have killed that. Ultra Ball. It might be worth using the Repel now, because if I've got 
coughing, Raticate, and Growlithe. The only things that can really show up here that are good are Ditto and Grimer. And then not that common. Yeah, I'm gonna repel. I've got extras as well. Just to avoid more encounters. That are pretty likely to be, whoa, uh, worthless. Pretty likely to be repeats. Now we have just received a $7 donation from Dora Kegmeister. Um, going towards making Spyro black and asking, did Worcester write the numbers stuck to his chest? If so, he has very nice handwriting. I did not write the numbers stuck to my chest because I have very bad handwriting. I actually, uh, I asked Lacey to write them because she has much better handwriting than mine. She is also the master of our whiteboard at ASM for the exact same reason. All right, so this is the quiz. You've just got to make sure you're pressing the right button here because if you if you get one of these questions wrong, you actually have to fight a trainer. And obviously, I want to be avoiding that as much as possible. All of these ones are B. You want to be mashing like all of A, B, and L for as long as possible, and then just when the question comes up, press B. So what am I at? 29. Okay, so I'll probably... I'll probably go for Ponytar. So the route, again, it kind of varies based on how many pokes you've got at different stages. So sometimes you go for... Ponytar is one that's like really specific. You go for into a specific area to try and catch a Ponytar because you can trade Ponytar for Seal. And then if it's a high-level Ponytar, you can then evolve the Seal. <clears throat> evolve it into Dugong as well. And so it's worth three Pokemon. But because I used the Repel early there, which I'm still happy with that decision, I didn't get as many Pokemon as I might get in uh, the Pokemon Mansion there. So I think I will go for Ponytail, just to try and be sure. Okay, so here I am fighting Blaine, who is the seventh gym leader. I have still not fought the fourth or the sixth. But I needed to come here in order to get the TM for Blizzard before I fought Erika. And I also want Blizzard before I go into Saffron and do everything in Saffron which includes fighting Sabrina. The other thing that's really good about doing Blaine is his badge increases your special attack. So as a kid, I thought those badge boost things were just entirely false because you would check your stats and your stats don't actually increase. But in battle, they actually do. So if you have 90 special attack and I've beaten Blaine, effectively for the damage calculations, it uses 99 special attack because it increases it by 10%. In Gen 3, anyway. In the earlier Gens, it's by 9 over 8. So I'm using Water Pulse there instead of Surf, because Surf would do too much and hit it into healing range. Ideally, you have Torrent after Plane. I don't. It's not really that big a deal. I might end up dying afterwards. But if that happens, it happens. I've still got the Revive and the Max Revives from, from Safari Zone, so I'm not that bothered. So Blaine down. What I love about Blaine is he tells you after giving you Fire Blast, don't waste it on a water Pokemon. And so as a kid, out of spite, I always taught Fire Blast to Gyarados. Always. But yeah, so you actually have to walk out of this gym. In the originals, you can use an escape rope, but they force you to walk out here. And there's an extra little cutscene where Bill asks you, hey, do you want to come explore these islands with me? So if you're doing any percent runs, you have to say no. But in this category, you have to say yes. Because you actually have to do this little side quest in order to activate the whole of the Sevi Islands. So he's going to take me here, and this gives me access to one, two, and three islands. The trainer tower is on seven islands, and I still can't access that. But I need to do this little side quest first, as well as getting all 60, well, 60 Pokemon to get the national decks in order to get access to seven islands. You also have to do another little side quest after the Elite Four as well on the same islands. But for now, I have to do this. So he, does he give me a town map? I think he gives me a town map. These guys talk for so much longer than I always think they do. 
Right. Yeah, he brings you to this island to show you around and then just completely ditches you. And asks you to do stuff for him as well. So yeah, it gives you the tripass. So this is one, two, and three islands. And so here, there's a lot of Pokemon that I want to catch here as well. Because there's some nice high-level um, Candy Evolve perks. The main one, as I mentioned, is Oddish. So Oddish is really good because, obviously, Rare Candy into Gloom. And then Gloom is a Stone Poke. So you get three for one. You can also encounter Gloom and just catch Gloom as well. Okay, so in Two Island, I have to go to this casino. And then you encounter this guy who has the incredible foresight to name his daughter Lost L, and then get really surprised when she gets lost. And so the entire side quest here is basically finding Lost L, and she is on three islands. Uh, I have just gone back to one island. Press A for one too many uh, text boxes there. Three island, please. Thank you. Yeah, so got to fight these bikers. Got to make sure I've got the right line there. If I'm too far away, again, the last uh, biker here that I have to fight will actually walk towards me. So if I'm not directly below him, he takes a lot longer in order to get to me. This is another text box I've got to make sure to say A, or say A, press A. Because normally, again, you're mashing A, B, and L all the time just to get through text boxes. But if you say no to that guy, you actually don't initiate these fights whatsoever. Yeah, so most of these fights are free. The first three certainly are. Uh, but the last one has a Weezing and a Muck, and I can't one-hit either of them because I'm not in Torrent. So I'm going to have to use an X-Special there. And Weezing, I have to use the X-Special on Weezing. And Weezing could just immediately blow up. And if it does that, it will kill me. Uh, it can also use Smoke Screen, I think. And then the Muck has Minimize. So there's a few bad things that can happen on those fights. Hopefully it all goes well, though. I think I could have been using Water Pulse on the Coffings. I think that would have been a guaranteed kill, but I'm not actually that worried about my Surf PP. Though, maybe I should be, because if I get Smoke Screen, I could miss a lot. And with High Special Attack on the next fight, I, might act I may actually use more Surfs. The fight after this one is uh, three grass types. It's Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Ivysaur. With low special attack, you have to use Blizzard. But with high special attack, if you're in Torrent, you can use Surf, which is more consistent. Okay, next special. Smoke screen, no. Okay, got the wheezing. Hopefully Muck just uses Acid Armor, and I just don't miss it. Because the problem is, even if I hit the first one, if he damages me to the point where I'm going to die, it's like, do I heal, or do I keep Torrent? Screech? Screech is good. Okay, I didn't miss. I don't have Torrent, so I probably will be using Blizzard for the next fight anyway. Okay, and with them out of the way, I can go to this mart. I'm going to sell something. Carlos. I knew I have some vitamin that I sell that I couldn't remember what it was. Uh, I think I can buy 12 Ultras. Oh, I can buy way more than that. I only need four Max Repels. Uh, let's just buy another Revive, actually. I, I think I have enough Ultras. All right, so now we're back to Pokemon catching. Ideally, I would like to see Oddish. Meowth would be really nice here as well because I'm a, there's Oddish. 
I can uh, I can actually weaken Meowth at the moment. I'm about to teach Blizzard over Bubble, and when that happens, I can't weaken Meowth anymore. Sleep Powder, that's fine. I'll just chuck the ball. Please use the Awakening before doing anything else. Awakenings are up. Yep. As I mentioned, faster to use the Awakening than the Poker Flute, just because the Poker Flute has a really long animation. So I'm delaying te teaching Blizzard as much as possible in case I encounter a Meow. Pidgey I would catch if I didn't catch a level 3 before, but I did, so I'd rather hold out for Pidgeotto. Alright, so Blizzard here. Uh, not the Berry Pouch. TM case, please. I forgot to swap Blizzard to slot one, uh, Bubble to slot one, so we'll just go down to slot three. You can see how slow that is scrolling there. Uh, I'm also going to teach Strength here. Strength goes to Clefable because Clefable does not have four moves yet, so it's a faster teach. All right, and now into Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Ivysaur. So using Blizzard for this fight, because I'm using three, I'm going to use an X Accuracy prior. Using an X accuracy increases your accuracy, obviously, but it does, still does not make Blizzard 100% accurate because it increases your accuracy by um, by four over three, and with 70%, that does not reach 100. So we're rolling 93 Blizzards, which on this fight is not actually. You know, even if I miss one because I'm not in Torrent, I'm not going to die. But in later rival fights especially, you can roll a 93 Blizzard and miss, and then it's just... It's so over. And even just saying those words out loud is really initiating some trauma for me. But okay, hit all of those, so that's good. Uh, coming up here is a Walker. So Walkers are kind of similar to Spinners in that they kind of move, like can hit you because of their random er erratic movements, but walkers walk around instead of spinning around. Oh my goodness. Please go away, thank you. She was, I, I feel like she was one lower than she normally is, so she'd already moved down. Kind of throw up my line. All right, so this is Berry Forest. So this is where I really want to get either Execute or Venonat. I would prefer Execute if they were going to give me one. Venonat, all right. I'll still take it. Still definitely take that. No! No, <laughs> dude. Ah, so that's obviously the other thing that could happen with this category. You finally get a Pokemon you're looking for, and then you end up criticaling when you're trying to weaken it. I do not need more Oddish. So other good things I can get in here other than Venonat and Execute is Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto would be another candy poke as well, because it would be level 37. I uh, can also get, uh, uh, I guess I'll catch Gloom, save a candy. It's a good flinch. Gloom has pretty annoying moves. It like it has Moonlight, which heals half its health. So you can just be sitting there forever trying to weaken it. And it just keeps healing its health. And can also status you too. All right, there's 31. Definitely still going to hunt for one more poke in here. Yeah, can also get Drowsy. Um, so, yeah, there's still four more options. Drowsy. Uh, Water Pulse, I think. These are like the worst options I can be getting to catch because these aren't free Pokemon. Like, Execute is worth two, Venonat is worth two, and Pidgeotto is worth two. I very much want at least one of them. Drowsy isn't worth two because I'm going to catch Hypno, like, afterwards. It's a forced encounter. This is Lost L up here. Pidgeotto, okay. No Execute or Venonat. Actually, Pidgeotto can use Whirlwind as well, so there's no guarantee this is a catch. Feather Dance, good.
Yep, all right, there's Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto is my favorite Pokemon to get as a candy poke, though, because I love Pidgeot. It's also actually extremely good to have Pidgeot going into the Elite Four. It can actually be very useful against Lance. All right, so now Lost L. Oh, I'm so annoyed I crit that Venonat. <laughs> if I crit the, if I hadn't crit the Venonat, I'd be in a really good position. I'm still not in Torrent, so I'll use Surf to weaken this. Very good. Hypno's got a pretty poor catch rate, so even at this health, it's not guaranteed. But that was a really good roll. Yep, 34. This is like 20 minutes ago, but the re other reason I kept Caterpie in my party was for Ditto. Uh, I didn't encounter a Ditto, but the best way to catch a Ditto is to switch to Caterpie, because Ditto actually copies the catch rate of a Pokemon it transforms into in Gen 3. They actually changed that after this game in Gen 4, that it doesn't copy the catch rate. But so if you switch to Caterpie, it then copies the best possible catch rate. All right, go up here. I can get more encounters here. Nothing. Get this rare candy. And then... I'm gonna fly back to one island. This is just faster than taking the boat. And I'm going to try and get ponies up, which is now. So I could also get Meowth here. That would be an excellent Pokemon because that would also be a candy perk. And I can't get Meowth after this point. So perfect would be Meowth and then Ponytail. Geodude, okay. Well, Geodude's also a candy perk. The reason I would prefer Meowth, though, is I can get Geodude later in Victory Road. All right, that's Geodude. Now we have had a $50 donation from Christina Z, uh, possibly related to Wooper Z. Um, he says, can't wait for this Spyro run, make him Ninja Black. Spira. Okay, well, I don't need Spira. Obviously, already have that. I, I could evolve that into Fira, but I did not like catching Pokemon just to use a rare candy to evolve them into something else. Also, I can encounter a Fira later on. But there's a pretty decent chance I will get enough candy pokes that catching that is basically just a waste. All right, there's Ponytail. It is not a high level one, so I can't get Dugong but I can get CL out of that. And I crit the ponies <sighs> Not good. Just waiting for the higher level one. No, that's Geodude. I was really hoping I was just immediately going to be a level 34 pony tower. Oh dear. Geodudes are not very common here. This is really weird that I'm getting so many of them. There's Fira, okay. Uh, go Water Pulse to weaken. I still really want Ponytar though. If I get Meowth next before Ponytar, I'll actually just leave and not get Ponytar. But given I can still get Meowth, I want to stay on the grind here. 36. There's actually way more Pokemon than I normally have. Especially if I get Ponyto. Meowth. Okay, we're not getting Ponyto. I'm pretty tempted to go for one more encounter just to try and get the Ponyto. I'm pretty tempted. It is the most common thing to get here. Yeah, we're doing it. One more. One more. Give me Ponyta. Yes! Alright, it's not 34. Please do not critical this time. Thank you. That was objectively not a good decision to go for that encounter, but is going to help significantly. That's the other thing with this category. You can... 
you can make shocking decisions that pay off, and you can also play like an absolute genius and get punished for it all the time. All right, so I'm at 38. I don't have Venonat. I need to think about, I'm about to do a box switch. I need to think about what to get out. Uh, so I need to heal Blastoise. Need to get out Pikachu, Ponyta, and I'm thinking Growlithe should be the other thing I get out. Pikachu. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, Growlithe. Yep. Alright, and now that's that side quest done. Got quite a few pokes there, which I'm happy about. And so now I'm going to do... I'm going to get a lot of, uh, like, standard always get Pokemon. I mean, Seal isn't, but, like, I'm going to do... I'm going to get the fossils here in Cinnabar Island and do a couple of in-game trades. So, the first thing I'm going to do is evolve Pikachu, and now I have a level 3 Raichu. And then I'm going to evolve Growlithe as well, which is why I wanted Growlithe out. So the perfect team to have here would be Pikachu, Ponyta, and Venonat, because you do an in-game trade for all three of them in here. But because I don't have Venonat, I just need something else to fill that space. And it's best in this case for it to be a stone evolution, because I'm right where the stones are from using the Thunderstone. Okay, there's Arcanine, up to 40. So I'm going to leave here at 44, because there's two trades and two fossils that I'm going to get. So the first trade is in here, which is going to be that level 3 Raichu. And this is exactly why the level 3 Pikachu was so necessary, because when you do in-game trades in this game, they come back to you at the same level. So I'm going to trade a Raichu for an Electrode, and I'm going to get a level 3 Electrode, which is going to be the absolute king of Trainer Tower. Electrode is very, very fast, and even at level 3, it knows this great move called Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom always does 20 damage, which is a worthless move unless you are level 3, because at level 3, not many Pokémon actually have more than 20 health. And so it can outspeed and one-hit a lot of Pokémon at level 3. Oh, duck in here and then trade the Ponyta for Ponyta, Ponyta, thank you, for Seal. I think I did not count Electrode. I think Electrode was 41. And then this is 42. Yeah, I'm pretty confident about that. Because I said I was going to leave at 44. But yeah, so as I mentioned, if the Ponyta was um, level 34, I could also evolve this Seal into Dugong, but... I got the low level one. The low level one is more common, so I'm just happy I got the ponytail. And I've got quite a few candy perks that I don't think I'm going to run out anyway. Because I've got what? I've got Paris, I've got Pidgeotto. I've got to do one of the Nidorans. You have to say yes to this guy twice. That's definitely one I've said no to on accident. This guy also moves around. So ideally, he kind of moves towards you, so he's just yeah, That's the worst thing that can happen. All right, there's Omanite. That's 43. And now I'm going to give him the old Amber. And then he's going to give me Aerodactyl. All right, so that's better. Move towards me early. All right. That's 44, and now with all of that finally done, we're now going to go to Saffron City. We're still not going to fight Erica. Still going to do Saffron first.
Another question for you, Wester. Yes. Is this the last gen that the Pokemon you trade for is the same level as the Pokemon you give away? It's not the last gen, but it is true in later gens that they give them to you at a set level. So I think it's Gen 6 where they changed that. I'm not actually sure whether it was 5 or 6. But yeah, nowadays, even if you trade like a level 3, uh, like Bunnelby or whatever, the Farfetch is still the same level. I'm not actually sure if that's safe. I'm going to risk it. Okay. Yeah, that was a walker. If he moved down, he would have gotten me. And he's a really bad trainer to get you to. This spinner I have to pass three times. I'm just going to bag manip him every single time because there's just no consistent setup that you can do here, really. And so you've also noticed, well, you might have noticed, Caterpie is the lead Pokemon in my party right now. Uh, that is on purpose because I'm going to give Caterpie experience in order to evolve it. It's also why I really don't want to fight um, those optional trainers there because I want Caterpie to be getting the experience on specific fights. And the first one is going to be this rival fight. So the rival now has a bit more of an upgraded team here in Saffron, which is why I wanted both Blizzard and the special attack boost, and also the experience that came with it before I actually come and came and fought him. So he does not have sand attack on his Pidgeot anymore. It will actually relearn sand attack in later fights. But at the moment, all it's going to do is actually attack me. Yeah. At least he picked Quick Attack there and not Wing Attack. Uh, so, X Special. And X Accuracy. Unfortunately, because he critical me, if I miss Blizzard now on Venusaur, I will die. I would have had enough health if he did not. But yeah, now Caterpie's going to get this experience. And because, yeah, Caterpie evolves at level 7. And then it evolves into Metapod, and Metapod evolves at level 10. So it's worth just giving it a little bit of experience to get those two pokes. Alright, please hit Blizzard. Okay, I tanked it. Uh, please hit this one. Oh my god. Double miss 93. Okay. I don't know what to do. Let's go... Electrode. I think I'm going to have to use the Max Revive. Because I need to set up X Special and X Accuracy again. It's actually probably not worth setting up the X Accuracy. Because it's an extra turn on Venusaur instead of an extra turn on Pidgeot. So it's probably worth just X special and then hit raw 70% blizzards. Okay, missed poison powder, that's nice. Thank you. All right. Well, that sucks. I would have much rather keep my max revive for later on. I think I'm going to leave Bite here. I'm not going to get Torrent, so I'm probably going to use Bite plus Blizzard to try and kill. I have no more Blizzards. Fantastic. Okay, I guess I'll just spam Bite to kill this. Oh, this is not how this fight is supposed to go, in case you were wondering. So normally what would happen is, so I had 72 health, and then I would enter Gyarados at about 72. I would use Surf, he would use Dragon Rage, hit me to about 32. And then at 32 health, I would be in Torrent, and then I could just use Torrent Surf and wouldn't have to use any Blizzards. I'm supposed to have Blizzards for Erica as well, and I have none. I might just box heal Blastoise after Giovanni and just not have Torrent. I, I can't think of any other way to do this. I don't have Torrent anyway, so I could get it a bit later on. Alright, so now Caterpie is going to evolve into Metapod. That's 45. While we're waiting for Caterpie, we have had a $100 donation from Zinky, who says, Hi SM, been loving the event so far. I first heard about it from Worcester, so thank you for that, Worcester. 
since Worcester doesn't believe in jinxes, I'll say that he'll definitely not get a 15-minute knockout tower. Now that I've said that, let's see what happens. Put the donation towards Final Fantasy X-2. It is true, I do not believe in jinxes. I hate anybody who does. I would rather say this definitely will not happen, and then it does. And just enjoy the the marvel of it all. All right, so Lapras is 46. Lapras, obviously, another gift poke that you're always going to get. And so Metapod is still in the lead. It only needs one more level, and just this level 32 Cubone is going to do enough for that. Switch to Blastoise. Uh, I can't actually... I'm not actually sure if I want damage from this Cubone or not. I didn't get it. Uh, I think I, I am going to just take a box heal after Giovanni, which is going to be not great, but... Because ideally you would have Torrent for Sabrina and for Erica and for Giovanni's gym. But if I take the box heal, I'm not going to have it. But I have no blizzards and I cannot beat Erica's Vile Plume without blizzard. Well, I mean, I can, but obviously very slowly. By doing this, I will have more surfs. I will get a lot of them back, obviously. But I'll get all of them back. That's what healing does. Alright, so now we get Butterfree. That's 47. I'm pretty sure in my PB I only had 42 pokes at Sabrina. So I'm very high ahead at the moment. Okay, and now I'm going to switch Blastoise back to the front because it does not need any more experience. Hello, get out of there. Uh, so because I'm not in Torrent, I'm going to use an X Special here. I'm a bit worried about my X Specials because I've had to use an extra one on two different rival fights after dying. But because I do have really good special attack, I think it should still be fine. So I'm just going to use Surf on his Kangaskhan, I think. It's a very low chance to be able to hit, uh, one hit, but... He does not have healing items, so even if it doesn't kill, it's not actually that big a deal. You could go for Water Pulse to throw in the Confuse chance as well. But I think there is a chance for Surf to kill, so I'll just stick with that. He's gone Fake Out. I'm still not in Torrent though. Oh, I got it! Okay, nice. I'm pretty sure that would have been like... A 3 in 16, maybe, to be able to kill. Normally I'd be using Water Pulse to save Surfs, but because I've decided I'm going to box heal Blastoise, it's better to just keep using Surf. It's only got four characters, and I'm already on it, on the cursor. I actually, I think I could skip this uh, Re Sylphco Rare Candy, but I'm going to get it anyway, just to be sure. I should have talked to him from the left. He's going to give me the Master Ball. So the funny thing about this run as well is that there's nothing really that you um, want to use the Master Ball on. Uh, so we'll get out Nidoran. Nidorino. Uh, yes, sorry, I want Caterpie. No, not that Caterpie, I want Weedle. Not Paris. Because I think I might be able to skip a later box heal. I, I won't evolve Weedle until Giovanni's gym, but I think I can skip doing... A yeah, I want that. Why am I running away from the elevator? Uh, I want... I want to be able to skip the box heal until after Giovanni, and still instead of before Giovanni. So I want Weedle in my party now. This is the extra rare candy. Uh, and we'll go escape rope. And 
and then head over to Serena. Small optimization on these warp tiles, you end up landing in the position that you're facing. And so to avoid turn frames, it's better to like be going down into this one. So you can be going straight down and avoid the turn frame. And similarly with the other ones, it's going up into the first one and then left into the second one. So you can actually avoid a turn frame. Uh, because I don't have torrent, I need to X special. Set up the X speed on Venomoth now. Can't mind increasing his special defense, obviously, means I'm doing less with uh, with Surf. So I don't want to use the X speed. He does another one, and then I can't kill him in one hit. Venomoth does do less damage, but it can use Supersonic. Usually, the less damage is preferable, but given I'm nowhere near Torrent, I actually don't really care about that at the moment. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll just be able to kill the last two with Surf. Okay, that Sabrina wasn't too bad. Once again, it was just the rival fight that was awful. And then from Sabrina's gym, I actually can just use an escape rope. Instead of having to do the puzzle backwards. Uh, I'll use our leaf stone first, just because it's there. On the menu. We'll get Vile Plume, that's 48. And so the reason I wanted the Nidorans out is I'm going to do that in-game trade now as well. So I'm not going to get to use that last Leaf Stone because I didn't catch Execute. And that's what I meant earlier about not being able to anticipate exactly what pokes you're going to get, but you never want to go all the way back to sell it on Mart just to buy items, so you'd rather just do them all at once. Okay. So trade Nidoran male for Nidoran female. Then I'm going to use a rare candy on the Nidoran female to get Nidorina, and then double Moonstone to get King and Queen. I think I got out the right Nidoran male because uh, I had a level 22 and a level 24 Nidoran male and it actually does matter uh, which one you get in that context. Uh, where are my candies? Are they down? They are down. Okay, yeah, I got out the 24. So that is the right decision because if you get out a 22 and you evolve it to 23, it tries to learn a new move and you have to say no which takes quite a few extra seconds. I did not need that extra candy. I have so many extra pokes. Uh, I can probably just skip the rare candy in uh, Victory Road. Uh, Moonstone. Hello? Because, yeah, I'm at... Well, I'm at 51, but then Nido King will be 52. I'm definitely getting Kakuna and Beedrill. So that will be 54. And then I've got Parasect and Pidgeot ready to go with rare candies. And I've still got another rare candy. So that'd be 56. I'm definitely getting at least one of Rattata and Mankey. I would love to get both. So yeah, I don't think I need an extra rare candy. Oh, I also have Geodude. So I have Graveler ready to go as well. So 54, 57. So I just need three more pokes. So ideally that would be... Oh, I don't have Psyduck yet either. So ideally I'd get Rattata and Mankey. And then just, I guess, get Psyduck. And then that's it. Uh, and now we're going to fly to Celadon and finally fight Erika. <clears throat> So 
So obviously fighting Erica now, uh, the pokes in here are pretty low level. But even so, I still have to use Blizzard in order to kill her Vile Plume. And because I do not have uh, Torrent, I also have to use Blizzard to defeat her Victor Bell. All of the other Pokemon in here that I have to fight, I can just use Bite though. And unfortunately, you do have to fight a couple of trainers before you can actually fight Erika. Unlike the last few gym leaders where you've just been able to go straight to them. I do have a bit of extra experience. I'm not sure whether it's going to be enough, though, to get level 50 before... Viridian Rivals Venusaur, which does make a really big difference to how I should approach the fight. Because if I get to level 50, I only need to use 2x specials, but if I'm at 49, I need to be using 3. You get to level 50 if you don't give up any experience to Caterpie and Weedle, but I am going to be giving experience to both Caterpie and Weedle. But then I have extra experience, so I'm not actually sure. This is Erica, uh, so I'm just gonna hit, try and hit the Blizzard's Roar. I'm not gonna use an X accuracy. I, I don't have spares to use. And even if I do miss, she's not gonna outright kill me from over 100 health. Okay, got the Victor Bell. Because Tangler has such low special defense, you can just bite the Tangler. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now that I've beaten all of the first seven uh, gym leaders, now I can go fight the eighth gym leader, who is Giovanni. Just before I fight him, I'm going to switch Weedle to the front and then give him experience from the first two gym trainers that I have to fight. Before fighting Giovanni, uh, this gym at this health is going to be pretty free. Ideally, I would have Torrent. I'm going to have to use another X special on this fight here because I cannot get the, uh, the Machokes without a plus one boost. The Torrent and X Special are the same boost. So the way increasing um, stat stages works is it increases by 50% by one stage, but only from the base rate. So the first X Special increases your damage to 150%, but the second one increases it to 200% and then 250 and then 300, and then 350, and then 400, which is the max. But so that means you actually get diminishing returns. Because even though that is a 50% increase, you know, 50% of 300 is 150, and it's only going from 300 to 350 on that stat stage. So the first stages do increase the uh, the damage output you have by more. I was hoping I might be able to avoid the box heal after Giovanni as well, but that's definitely not going to happen. All right, there's Kakuna. That's 53.
If this trainer, Bazali, actually has five Pokemon, I have no idea why they gave some random gym trainer five Pokemon. But they're all extremely easy to kill. Just have to switch to Blasters again. Uh, I need to check... Oh, no, I'm not going to get a level up. I was going to say I need to check Blasto's speed to see if it's going to outspeed uh, Giovanni's Doug Trio. Because normally I wouldn't have extra experience and I can check here. But I forgot to check at the last level. If Doug Trio outspeeds me, it's going to kill me. But if it doesn't, healing would be a waste. I'm not sure whether to just risk it or not. I think I will, ultimately. That's what I'm all about, taking risks when there's absolutely no reason to. Actually, if I'm going to heal again after Giovanni, I should be spamming Surf. I don't need to conserve them. Because obviously you can by using Water Pulse here. Especially now that I'm in Torrent, Water Pulse kills all of these folks. Kills all of Giovanni's folks as well. Alright, there's Beedrill, that's 54. switch Blastoise to the front. So the stupid thing about Giovanni is obviously you, you fight him throughout the game before fighting him as a gym leader and he uses different pokes. But when you fight him in the game corner and in Silphco, his Pokemon have 30 IVs. So they're all actually really strong. But when you fight him as a gym leader, they all have zero IVs. So they're all actually really weak. Makes no sense. There's quite a few instances of stuff like that in different Pokemon games. It makes me unreasonably mad. Like, one of the ones that makes me really mad is in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Rival 2 has very, very good IVs, but then the later gym leaders just don't. Doug Trio is faster than me. I'm dead. Oh, I lived! Oh my goodness. That was a min roll. I guarantee you that was a min roll. The roll there would have been 28 to 34. <laughs> it was also a speed tie with the Doug Trio. <laughs> why it's better to take risks. Just makes things a bit more exciting. Okay, but yeah, I'm definitely going to heal before Rival. Get my Surfs back, but also get my health back, just to avoid having to use the Max Potion just yet. So the question is, will killing Viridian Rival's Pidgeot be enough experience to get me to level 50? because it's Pidgeot and then he sends out Venusaur straight away. And that looks really, really close. It could definitely go either way. I'm not sure whether this is a risk I want to take though, because if I only set up two and I do not get the level, Venusaur will just kill me. And then it's pretty over from there. So I have to go to the box here at some stage anyway, because I need to get out Pokemon to evolve. I also need to get Clefable back out for strength. So I will get Clefable here. And Paris. Three candy pokes were Paris. Oh, I have Meowth as well. So I have four candy pokes? Meowth, Paris... Geodude and Pidgeot. Yeah, I have four candy pokes. Okay. I think I have three candies, so if I just get the other candy, I'm just set. I don't even need Psyduck. This is a weird run. I'm usually so low on pokes, and I'm just so ahead at the moment. 
Level three, level three. Level two, that'll do. That works. That is 55. I'm actually just quickly gonna check my poke count because this seems really high. I'm just gonna save. Yeah, it is 55, okay. Okay. Was there a reason there was to that you didn't master ball the Mankey? Uh, I'm saving the master ball for Radata. Uh, now I need to make sure to use the X accuracy here before the third X special, because if you use three X specials, Pidgeot will then use Whirlwind. But it doesn't change its move until the third one is activated, so I'm at plus three now, but it's not going to pick Whirlwind. Okay, it's going to crit me. That's actually a good thing, surprisingly. The reason that's a good thing is now he's going to attack because I'm in kill range, so I can heal back to full as he uses quick attack. And now I have almost full health for the rest of the fight, so I don't have to risk... Oh, I missed Venusaur with Blizzard again, and then I'm immediately dead. I got to level 50 anyway, so I did not need the third. Hooray! Right, well, I can just buy... Uh, I think I can... Double bite Gyarados? I can definitely bite Growlithe. Because I've got the third X special up. Yeah, that's definitely double bite. He's picked Rain Dance as well. So even if that bite actually did not do nearly enough, I could switch to Surf because he picked Rain Dance. Rain Dance is actually really rare from him there. So again, just reducing the super effective text, going about on bite on Growlithe, and then I'm going to Surf Alakazam. So I'm very confident I do have three rare candies, and I can just get the fourth in Victory Road. I wonder actually if it's faster to not get it though, and just catch a side up. I'm going to need to do the box anyway. Actually, what I should do is not grind for Radata, but I got Radata anyway. Okay, and it's level 3. Beautiful. So this is going to be the last Pokemon I'm going to catch. So I am actually going to Master Ball a level 3 Radata. Yeah, so in other categories, you would save the Master Ball for something like Mewtwo or Zapdos. But in this run, it's often just used on the last Pokemon that you're going to actually catch. In Victory Road, the best Pokemon it can be used on that has a really bad catch rate is Onix. And Onix is quite common in Victory Road. That's usually what I keep it for. There's also like Marowaks in there that are pretty hard to weaken as well um, with pretty bad catch rates. Yeah, I've never used it on Radatar before. I've never had enough pokes this early to actually use it on Radatar. Okay, and because I do not need Psyduck, I'm just going to Max Repel immediately here. Uh, I did not want to get off there. Time for some donations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have $7 from Chul Pollens, uh, who says, here's some money for that Hype 1 HP survival on Giovanni. Also think of it as $1.75 for each of those Blizzard misses. Uh, put this towards Farming Simulator. 
And we have $14.62 from Hugs, who says colon free, colon free, colon free. Okay, so this is why I needed to get Clefable back into my party, because I need strength for Victory Road. Because the bike is so sticky in this game, oh Jesus, I almost went out of Victory Road after doing that puzzle. Um, I tend to, when I need to like change direction there, do kind of movement like that. Uh, I don't think the second Max Repel is actually going to last all the way here, but I think I still have a spare um, regular Repel. I'm just going to use the Wreck Endies now. Yeah, I've got four, so we'll get Geodude. Meowth could be holding a Wreck Endy right now as well. <laughs> Its ability is uh, is pick up. I think it's got a 5% chance to be holding a candy, but because I've already got enough, I'm not even gonna check. If I didn't have enough, I would check. Okay, so that's Graveler. I kept Pidgeotto in the box. That's the one I've got left, which is good because I want Pidgeot in my party at the end. Uh, yeah. The Paris is just holding a mushroom, so what the Paris has is, is not useful. It just came with it as I caught it. That's 59, just one to go. Okay. Now get on with getting out of here. So usually I... In the last like few runs I've done of this category, I've entered Victory Road needing like eight more Pokemon in Victory Road and had to catch like Geodude and Zubat and Onyx and Marowak or something. I don't know. Just needed so many. There was one where I actually couldn't get enough in Victory Road and had to go back to Viridian Forest in order to get more Pokemon. So not needing any in Victory Road, or even the Psyduck, or the area just before Victory Road. You can get like Ekans and uh, Firo, and you can get Man and Mankey there as well, but I mean, I already had Mankey. That one actually isn't that dangerous, so I should be a bit more riskier on that one. Okay, Fire Raid is a hard game, so you go to the right, is how I remember that. In the originals, you have to go to the left there to dodge the trainers, but in this game, you have to go to the right to dodge the trainers. And the, I mean, it's not really a mnemonic, but the way I remember it is Fire Raid is hard and Red Blue is easy. So when it's easy, just go straight down. When it's hard, go to the right. It's a good thing I bought that extra repel. I did not actually expect to use it, but yeah, gonna be very helpful to not get any encounters through Victory Road. I've still got... I'm well set up for Trainer Tower. I actually think... Because I have Pidgey, Rattata, Mankey, Caterpie, and Weedle. So I have all six level threes, which is phenomenal. And I still have the Persian Berry, and I have the Orin Berry, and I have the Citrus Berry. I could not be more set up for Trainer Tower. So I need to get out Electrode, and I need to get out Pidgeot. I also need to put Blastoise through to heal it. Uh, what am I looking for? Pidgeotto. Where is Electrode? Electrode. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't think I need to bring anything else into my body now. Uh, I'm not going to use the Wreck Handy yet for the 60th poke. I'm going to do that when I actually do a menu. 
just to save doing an extra menu, so we'll buy the full restores and we'll buy a couple more revives, just in case. And then we're going to enter the Elite Four. Uh, so I haven't really decided where I want to save for the Elite Four. For the deeper fights, I absolutely should, especially considering I do not have... Uh, a lot of extra X items, but on Lorelei, because I do have good special attack here, I can definitely just use 4 X specials, and I do not need to X speed, which is good. So what I want to see here from Lorelei is I want to see her pick Safeguard as early as possible. I do not want to see her pick Hail at all. Safeguard good, because that's just a free turn where you're not taking damage. This is kind of the fight where the black glasses are the most helpful because using bite to kill these perks. That's a good roll. Another bite will definitely kill. So I'll be able to one hit the Cloister, the Slowbro and the Jinx, but Lapras is going to be a three hit. So, to not heal here, I'm going to need to get a flinch or a crit on the Lapras. Cloyster could pr pick Protect, so the fact it didn't is very good. It's probably not that big of a deal if uh, I have to heal on Lapras, though. Because you don't need exactly full health before Bruno. the Lapras. The Lapras is holding a Citrus Berry, so without, it's actually really good that it is, because without it, I would be hitting the Lapras into heal range from two bites. That's a flinch, okay. Can skip the heal now. Unless this paralyzes, which it did. Okay, never mind. Okay, four storm. As I mentioned, that's not actually that bad, because now I just won't heal outside of battle before Bruno. Okay, that's not a bad sub. And having lower health can actually be better for Bruno, because ideally, you get hit into Torrent on Bruno. I want high Torrent. So the thing with Bruno is, I'm going to use a guard spec to prevent my speed from being dropped. And he can be using Rock Tomb or Earthquake. Earthquake does double the amount of damage, but Rock Tomb would reduce my speed. Rock Tomb can also miss, and Earthquake doesn't. Uh, I don't need to X speed because my speed is good enough. Without Torrent, I need... Uh oh, wrong way. Without Torrent, I need 4X specials, but with Torrent, I only need 2. So what I would like to happen here is Earthquake, Earthquake me into Torrent. And, of course, he's picking rocks in. That's two. That's not Torrin yet. So we'll go the third. Do not pick Earthquake and Critical. Do not pick Earthquake and Critical. Okay. Okay. That has happened before on multiple occasions. <sighs> okay. But so we've got Torrin. We're all set up. This is just one hit the party now. So, I forgot it had Muck Punch. I just forgot. I should have used the Super Potion there. And now I am... I'm just screwed. Uh, I really don't know what to do here. Because I'm going to run out of X items setting up again. And do I need one, two, three? Static was what I was going for by sending out Electrode there. Uh... Did I get the spare guard spec? Yes. Let's use the guard spec. I have six X specials. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have six X specials. That is so low. Yeah, I can't. I can't X special. 
I can't do it. I'm just going to have to, like, multi-hit all of these folks. Oh, that's so bad. No, I have to use one. I have to use one. That'll leave me with five. Uh... My god, I have no idea what to do. That's not Torrent. I've got to heal again because Marchamp will kill me. I'm going to run out of healing items as well. I mean, that's that was just a total throw, basically. If I just used a Super Potion as he picked Mark Punch, I would have been in high enough Torrent. Oh, jeez, that almost hit half. I needed to not do half. He... 73 to 81. Okay. Uh, let's send out for Fable. Okay, I'll heal now, I guess. I'm actually going to use Water Pulse and then Surf. Because Surf might hit it into heal range without the, the plus one, I think. He's out of cross drops now. Oh, that didn't kill. Oh, so now he's gonna heal. This is the easiest fight of the Elite Four, by the way. I'm gonna run out of surfs. I'm going to run out of surfs. Oh, stop picking bulk up. I'm going to have to elixir. Uh... I just have no idea what I'm going to do for the rest of these fights. I don't have enough healing, and I don't have enough PP, and I don't have enough X items, and I'm one health off Torrent. <sighs> the only way I could save the X items is by getting Torrent. One health off. Fantastic. Okay. So I have to max Elixir here. There's just no other option. Um... And then I am going to save. The reason I need Torrent now is I want to only use one X special here on Agatha. Because I'm going to use one on Lance, and I want three for the champion. And at the moment I have five, which only leaves me one for Agatha, which would be the strat with Torrent. But without Torrent, I want to use three. So ideally now, what's going to happen is, I X speed, she uses something. Then I X special, and she picks Shadow Punch, and hits me into Torrent. Just do that. No, no, no. I can't use more. I, I, I just cannot use more. So let's just spam bite. Hit me into Torrent. That's not gonna kill. Hit me into Torrent. Yes. Yes. Good. Now hit the surf. 
this is the next problem. Okay, I'm going to be safe here and use a Super Potion. Because one Shadow Punch there will kill me. She'll be guaranteed to use Shadow Punch now, but now Shadow Punch will not kill me. Okay. Good. Now I can kill all of her folks. That was un un unnecessary critical. But now everything will die at plus one with Torrent. And now I am fine for X specials. There'll just be one for Lance and three for Champion. I may end up only using two for Champion, but I need to have three for the strat divergence. Because sometimes you use three and sometimes you use two. And using two X specials there would not have helped anyway. Because without Torrent you need three. And again, that comes into the multiplication boosts. Because if you have Torrent, which is 150%, and an X special, which is 150%, that ends up multiplying correctly to 225%. Whereas just two X specials is just 200%. So plus one and Torrent is better than plus two. Okay, so now I'm going to heal before Lance, uh, and I guess I'll use the wreck handy here. Yes, I should. I should get Pitch up beforehand. So we'll move up. Uh, what am I looking for? Wreck handy. Pitch up. All right. This is 60, and I do not have a 60. Lacey, I do not have a 60. Alright, we've got 60. <laughs> Alright, so the reason Pidgeot is really good is... It allows me to actually tank hits. Uh, actually, wait, I'm not going to do that strat, am I? Maybe I should, with my healing. Yeah, I'm going to switch Pidgeot to the lead. And then I'm going to save before Lance. Because dying here would just be so consequential not having the uh, the X items and the healing. But yeah, Pidgeot kind of lures Lance into picking Hyper Beam, which gives you a free turn of setup with Blastoise. And if it misses Pidgeot, Pidgeot also has Feather Dance, which can reduce its attack even further to make the setup with Blastoise even better. Alright, so he's gone Hyper Beam and he's hit. So I'll just get the free turn. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to X Accuracy, I think. Then I'm going to use Bite. Go for the flinch. Nope. Another X Accuracy. He's gone Dragon Range. I've got a heal now. He can definitely do 80 with Hyper Beam. He may not pick it because it's probably a range. It's probably something like, you know, 77 to 91, which means he's not guaranteed to pick it. Oh, that did very little. They only did 74. Surely it can't do 86. So I'm just going to Blizzard. Nah, uh, this will be fine. I'll heal on um, Aerodactyl. So Aerodactyl's gonna outspeed me and it would kill me, but I'm just gonna heal on his turn. The thing you're always a little bit worried about is if he picks Ancient Power as you heal, and then Ancient Power has a 10% chance to get the Omni Boost, which increases all of its stats by 50%. I'm screwed. I am screwed. I actually have to redo this fight.
Okay, the reason I am screwed, and I just realized, is you are supposed to use a PP item after Lance to get your blizzards back before the rival where you need blizzards. And I just used all of my blizzards. So I'm now gonna actually have to do Gyarados differently to be able to save a blizzard. Oh God. Okay. I know what I know what I'll do. Uh, very silly of me to not notice that that would happen. Okay, so this time I will X special before I attack. Then I'll use two bites. That's not gonna kill. What do I do here? He's gone Hyper Beam from 120? Why? Why has he gone Hyper Beam from 120? Uh, I can't just use another X Special. He's gone Hyper Beam from full. What is going on with Gyarados right now? Oh, it's because it's at lower health. Um... I don't know what to do here. Hopefully that isn't heal range. It isn't, okay, okay. Okay, we're good this time. So I have one blizzard for rival. I'll have to save that for Venusaur. I would like more, but I can beat everything else without blizzard. I can't beat Venusaur without blizzard. This time I won't have to heal on Aerodactyl. Does that mean I still have a PP item? Because I need a PP item for Trainer Tower as well, and I was thinking I wouldn't have one now. And I would have to go get one, and I have no idea where I would get another one, because all of the other PP items I know are, like, deep in dungeons or areas. Like, I know of one in Pokemon Mansion on the bottom floor, and I know of one on the Max Ether that I skipped in uh, the game corner. Okay. That's Lance down. Oh, yeah, I still have an elixir. Okay. Um, good. So I don't have to find another PP item. I also probably, it would have been much faster to just use that elixir instead of doing the fight again and then getting a PP item. But I thought I didn't have one. Okay. We'll just save before the champion as well. Uh, now, Blastoise isn't in the front here. That's fine. I'm going to use a guard spec on turn one. Guard spec, unlike the other X items, which only apply to the Pokemon you're using them on, on that turn, until they switch out, like all other stat boosts. The guard spec applies to the whole party. So I'm gonna have, I think it's Chiding in the lead, yep. And I'm just gonna use the guard spec, turn one. And that's gonna apply to Blastoise as well. When I send it out here. So this Pidgeot has sand attack, which is why I want the guard spec up, because I do not want it to reduce my accuracy. So we'll go X speed. Mm -hmm. X special. X special. I am not getting torrent. I'm nowhere near torrent. We're going to have to go the third X special here. Oh, I've taken no damage. Okay. 
So kind of the more ideal strat is you go 2x special and x accuracy and then you use Blizzard. And then you can use another x accuracy on Venusaur so you can't miss it. So this Venusaur's attacking move is Solar Beam. So I can get off 1x accuracy before I fire a Blizzard. But this has to hit or it's over. Beautiful. Okay. But so now having full health is really good. I don't know what I'm going to do for Gyarados because I don't have Blizzards, but we'll figure something out. It should be fine, just whittling him down with Bite, or maybe Surf. I don't have Torrent though, so don't know about Surf. I'm at plus three though, so this should do a bit more. The thing I'm worried about is being in a similar situation where it's going to hit him into heal range eventually. Yeah, that is. That's going to put him in heal range. Uh, water pulse bite, maybe? Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Oh no, do not hit yourself and then be in heal range. No. 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 No! Okay, let's try that again. Okay, much better. And I have enough health that I don't have to heal at all. Arcanine has extreme speed. If you're low enough on health, you have to heal on Arcanine. But not having healing here at all is actually really good. Given I used so many earlier on in the E4. And I do want to keep a lot of healing items for the Trainer Tower. Okay, well done. We did it. We defeated Basball. Okay, so now that that's been done and I've done the Sevi Island side quest and I've got 60 pokes, once we get to, well, we're going to skip the credits. Once we save and reset the game, we're going to get to do another side quest on Sevi Islands, which we only have to partially complete, and then we're going to get access to the trainer tower. Save starts here. And you can just buffer the soft reset there. So you're holding A, B, start, select, and it just resets as soon as you can. So yeah, Oak comes up here. And he's astonished that you have 60 pokes. If you have less than 60 pokes, he's incredibly insulting towards you. There's just no in-between with this guy. And he basically just tells you to go see Bill again. I think Bill, or maybe he wants you to go see Celia, whoever, whoever his name is. Whoever his name is? That does not make English sense. But so first he gives you the national decks, and so the national decks uh, allows you to record data for all of the Pokemon in the game instead of just the first 151. And so some of the areas you can go to now have Pokemon outside of the first 151. And so you'll be seeing quite a few of those in the Trainer Tower. So I got to fly to Vermillion so I can access the ship again. One island and Cecilia. And so this is also required to be able to trade with other Gen 3 games. So Ruby and Sapphire were released in Gen 3 as well. And so this guy tells you to go find the Ruby and the Sapphire. And he needs both of them to be put into this machine so then you can trade with Ruby and Sapphire games. Which was a ridiculous system that they did just to try and prevent people like renting the games, basically. They wanted them to buy them. 
So you had to like beat the game in its almost its entirety to be able to trade. Okay, let's go around that spinner. Pause, no. Or react. There is an awful trainer skip here. No, not this one. This one. You have to actually time that. If you hold up, you will get hit. Because you get stuck on them as they're moving across. And then by the time you actually move up, they will hit you. And you have to fight both of them. And it's not a double battle. You have to fight them both as singles. Alright, so this guy is the move tutor for Explosion. And I am going to teach Explosion to my level 3 Electrode. I just realized I never switched Blastoise back to the front. It would have been awful if I hit any of those trainers. Let's do that now, please. There's still a couple more fights I have to do with Blastoise, namely these two. I also think it might have been possible to get encounters there without Blastoise in the lead, because the way it repels work is it repels Pokemon lower than your level. Pidgeot is 38, so it's actually quite high. It might just be inside of this cave that I might have gotten encounters. These are Pokemon that I don't have to surf, but I may as well, because these are the last fights that Blastoise does. Alright. And this one is much of the same. But so these fights just simply do not trigger until you do all of those side quest things. You can actually come up here much earlier, like as soon as I was at one island. But these rocker guys just tell you to buzz off instead of actually fighting you. But yeah, one of the things I do love about the uh, level 3 electrode strat for Trainer Tower is Explosion is actually useful. I wish it was more useful. It does get quite a few uses. But Explosion is just such a cool move to actually be using in a speedrun. Okay, we can say goodbye to Blastoise now. It is its job done. I would say it performed reasonably well, outside of those double 93 misses. It did pretty okay. Like, all of the Elite Four time loss was my fault, so I can't really put that on Blasters. Right, a few more boulder puzzles here. We will grab a couple of donations. Yeah. We have $8 from Pat Cummins, who says, do it for Gaz, mate. And we have $5 from PSI Guy 95 uh, who says, good to see Worcester's torrent ability kicked in when he was in a pinch. Put this to runner's choice. Lovely. Okay. And so down here, we get the ruby. That's what I was coming here for. Now I can just escape rope out of here. Before I do that, though, I am going to teach Shockwave to Electrode. in slot one over charge it is actually necessary to keep tackle as well because tackle is actually useful which is more of a indictment on how bad the fight tackle is actually useful on than tackle being good at all but okay now we fly back to one island and now with the ruby uh celio is going to say, oh, I need something else, I need the Sapphire. Here's the Rainbow Pass to go get the Sapphire. And then I'm going to completely ignore his quest, never give him the Sapphire, leave him in limbo forever, and just go do the Trainer's Hour. That's another text box you got to make sure to say yes on. I was actually mashing B, like right before the text box showed up.
The quest for the Sapphire is actually pretty long. You have to fight something like eight Rocket Grunts and do like a lot of puzzle stuff. And none of it is on Seven Island. Okay, now we're at the Trainer Tower. So I'm going to use all the money that I've got to be able to buy healing items. Uh, I'm a bit low on fullies, so I might just buy like one hyper, I don't know, and then buy the rest in revives. Oh no, I should get two hypers then. Yeah, we'll do that. And then I'm going to switch my party around and get out all my level threes. So Pidgey, I'm just going to move Electro to the front. Caterpie. Weedle. Uh, the other two will be over here. Radata And Banky. All right, and it's time to go. So there are four different levels of the Trainer Tower. I am going to do Mixed first. So Mixed has all of the four, uh, or the three different formats, those being simple, single, double, and knockout. So this is a single battle. It's just you fight people in the single format, and they've got two Pokemon. And so now you're going to see how good Sonic Boom is. So as I mentioned before, Sonic Boom always does 20 damage. And a lot of these pokes do not have 20 health. So I'm going to be using Sonic Boom to just one hit an overwhelming majority of the Trainer Tower. The thing with Sonic Boom though, is it does not have 100% accuracy. It has 90%. And you will inevitably, because you have to fight 32 trainers in here, miss some Sonic Booms. And so you have to be able to adjust to that. The doubles format as well is double battles, and Sonic Boom only targets one, so you're always going to need other Pokemon first to participate in the double battles. I forgot to equip the Orange Berry. Okay. This fight's going to be interesting. Um, and another problem is... There are some Pokemon you cannot Sonic Boom, like this Gengar, and this is why I wanted to have the Orange Berry equipped before this fight. It's the whole reason I get it, because now he's going to be able to kill me. Uh, yeah, oh, I should just take the death. There's nothing else I can do here. Why is he not attacking the Weedle? Please attack the Weedle. No! This is actually really bad because he's recovering health with leftovers. So he may not actually die in two hits now. I should have sent out Pidgey. Pidgey definitely would have died because he's got Thunderbolt. I just assumed he would have been able to kill Weedle as well. Okay, so now I want Hypnosis Miss on Electrode. It was a really bad mistake not equipping the Iron Berry. Yeah, I don't think this is going to kill. I reckon he's going to live with one health. Oh, I did kill. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Ah, uh, no. On Electrode, please. Uh, I'm just going to equip it now. It'll do something at some stage, I'm sure. So Electrode obviously is very fast. The other thing about the Trainer Tower is, so the Pokemon in here actually have EVs. So EVs' effort values are what increase stats from a specific point. So your IVs are like what your, are static and are determined as soon as the Pokemon is generated. But EVs are determined by the Pokemon you actually defeat. And... 
will increase a stat by a certain amount. And every trainer Pokemon that you fight throughout the game does not have any EVs. So the further you get through the game, the more like relatively stronger you are compared to them. And so now, now, now this is double fights. But yeah, in the trainer tower, these all of these pokes have the maximum amount of EVs. That some of them have max IVs too, but not all of them. That was a really nice Mega Horn miss, by the way. That was a very good fight. Uh, what am I doing? This Corsola and Kingler are actually one of the safest, um, like, fights to potentially miss Sonic Booms on, and I just missed. Classic. Uh, the Corsola has Dig, and the Kingler has Dive. They're the only ways they can damage you. I actually should have tackled the Kingler, but it doesn't matter. Mirror Coat, okay. Because if I kept missing, Rattata could potentially actually kill the Kingler with Tackle. Or at least put it into a position where Shockwave would kill it. Okay. But yeah, as you can see, the Sonic Boom miss there was not really consequential at all. It was just a little bit of time loss. Whereas for a lot of Pokemon, missing the Sonic Boom is... And now you're dead. Okay, and so then this is the knockout formula. Where you have to fight three trainers back to back and they've all got one Pokemon. Good. I need to make sure I don't run out of Sonic Booms uh, here because I need to save my Elixir, which should have been the Max Elixir. I should have used the Elixir in the Elite Four. I need to save that for the Knockout Tower. So Gyarados here is one of the only Pokemon I can actually use Shockwave on to kill. I need Shockwave anyway for the Gengar and there's also a Mischievous later on that I can't Sonic Boom to. But where you can use Shockwave you would rather use Shockwave, because it's got, I mean, it's got better than 100% accuracy. It can't miss, even with double teams or sand attacks. But there's only a couple of Pokemon, because really you need four times effectiveness. Okay, so this Tyranitar has 21 health, so I cannot Sonic Boom to kill it. So I'm actually going to explode, even though that's not going to kill it. And so the reason I did that is because if it crit, it would have killed. Shockwave, if it crits, does not kill. And the reason I don't want to use Sonic Boom is it's going to kill me. Anyway, it's got Earthquake, which just one hits me. So it's just faster to use Explosion. And if Explosion crits, then, you know, I, I save even way more time by not having to do this revive strat. The Tyranitar is also holding a Salak Berry, which increases its speed when it's at a quarter or below. And so I want to avoid triggering that too. There's the Iron Berry. All right. Yeah. Oh. So it's kind of a weird oddity. You have to wait for that guy to move around, but you can actually move before he stops moving. So you kind of just like bonk into him while you're waiting. Okay, both of these have Protect, which is a bit annoying. You just kind of have to guess which one isn't using it. Alright, Hitmonchamp. Wow. Thank God for the Orange Berry. Good. Uh, I guess I will Potion with Rattata. Which is Super Potion. It doesn't really matter. This is why having lots of like extra potions and Super Potions is really helpful too. Because, you know... At at level 3, potions are max potions, so... Alright, this is the 8th floor, which is... All of these um, 4 formats have 8 floors, which is why there's 32 different floors you have to do. It's actually more than 32 trainers, because the knockout ones have 3 trainers each. 
boots. that's the first one done because this last Pokemon I'm not going to use Sonic Boom on just to be safe because it's the last trainer of this set I'm just going to explode because the reason explosion isn't as useful as I would like is because you have to revive every time you use explosion but you know if it's the last Pokemon you don't have to revive because every time you enter a new stage of the trainer tower you get all of your party get healed back to full so I can just leave Electro dead, and when I start the next one, it'll all be good. Alright, yeah, so he mentioned there as well um, that he records your time, and he actually does. For whatever reason, the Trainer Tower actually has like a speedrun in-game time for how fast uh, you beat it. So you have to exit the trainer tower to start a new challenge. If you just go back up there, it doesn't start again. And you just go past the trainers you just defeated. A yes, knockout. So I do this in reverse order. So we do mixed, then knockout, then double, then single. Oh, whatever. Alright, so now you see Pokemon that don't actually look that strong. Like this Magby does not look strong at all. But a lot of these Pokemon are really annoying because they also, like, they've got held items as well. So, like, that Magby has Bright Powder. And Bright Powder just naturally increases your evasion as well. And so then a bunch of other Pokemon have Quick Claw too. And they can just Quick Claw, use Sweet Kiss or Attract or something. And then you're just constantly hitting yourself in confusion. So, like, this Togepi surely looks harmless. I have died to this Togepi before. There is another Togepi that I've also died to. There are very few Pokemon in the Trainer Tower I have not died to. Okay, that's a good start. Got all of those three with uh, no hacks problems. So now I'm going to equip the Lumberry. Ah, uh, too many. I need to have a berry that heals confusion for the fifth floor, for the mischievous. Uh, and so if I can keep the lumberry there, that's fine. But if the lumberry gets used up before then, I will equip the person because I already have the person. Uh, I kept the person, I should say. And if I only had the lumberry, I would just wait until the fifth floor to equip it because I wouldn't want it to go away. Because the mischievous, like the Gengar, takes many, many hits. Well, multiple. More than one, when I say many, many. Uh, because you can't use Sonic Boom on it, and you've got to use Shockwave. And it's got Confuse Ray. It doesn't actually seem that likely to use Confuse Ray, but if it does, it's horrendous. So, you want to be prepared. And yeah, because there's eight floors here and at least three trainers, you use more than 20 Sonic Booms, which is why I need the PP item here. Okay, so a 6 out of 6 so far. Knockout's going well. I told you Jinxes weren't real. Good. I've had a lot of problems with that mill tank before. That's just one that I tend to miss a lot. It doesn't actually have bright powder, but I just tend to miss it a lot. I don't know why. Obviously, it's just coincidence, but when those coincidences start creeping in, you just start thinking about it more than you should. Oh, there's a miss. 
sludge bomb. I will tank. That's going to waste my Lumberry on poison, of all things. How upsetting. And then Lapras. So here, uh, this Lapras has more than 21 as well. If I had full health, I would use two Shockwaves. But because Lapras is going to kill me, because I took damage there, it's actually faster to just explode. And then revive afterwards. Okay, Floor 4 starts with one of the most annoying Pokémon in the Trainer Tower. This is a Chansey, which obviously has more than 20 health. Its moveset is Minimize, Soft Boiled, Thunder Wave, and Water Pulse, which can confuse you. So it's got the Evasion, it's got the HP Restore, and it's got Parafusion. But I got them both, so that's beautiful. That's a fight that can go very, very badly. It's the type of Pokemon you would explode on if it was the last, but because of the format of Knockout being the next trainer comes and the next trainer comes, if I use Explosion there, by the way, Shiny Seeking, um, if you use Explosion there, you can't heal before the next, the next fight. So yeah, that's another thing about the Trainer Tower. There's actually a few Shiny Pokemon in here. There are three, to be precise, and that is the first of them. And so, similar deal here with this Vaporeon. If I had full health, I would double Shockwave, but because I don't, I will explode. Okay, so now we will revive back. This time I want to heal the full. Oh, we'll just use a high burn, doesn't matter. What? What? <laughs> I somehow hit B both times I was trying to hit A. It's because I was trying to hold. Oh, no, I do not need to use another hyper potion. Calm down, mate. Uh, equip the person. That's what I'm looking for. I hit B because I was trying to skip the cutscene, so I thought I'd hit A to uh, use the hyper potion and then hold B, but didn't turn out that way. They didn't go through. Alright, so this floor is just a bunch of Nidos, but I may as well set up here beforehand. Because if I miss these, they won't kill me in one hit. Uh, actually, maybe the Nido Queen does, because I think this is the choice banded Nido Queen. It doesn't have Earthquake, it's got Superpower. But I think this is the choice banded one. I actually should have just used the Elixir while I was there in the menu. Because it's only going to heal 10, so it would have done as much as it could. Usually I wait until a little, a little bit later and use the Max Elixir, but I, I messed up my ordering. Okay. This knockout's actually been pretty good so far. Only the one miss. Expecting to have to menu again after the mischievous, and I'll just use the elixir then.
Alright, so here it is. Quite often you end up dying to this mischievous, so it's got Psychic to damage you, Confuse Ray to annoy you. It's also got Destiny Bond and Grudge, and it's also holding a Salak Berry. So if you get bad rolls, you can activate the Salak, and then it just picks Destiny Bond. That's not Salak though, so I should be fine. Beautiful. Okay. Double Psychic is rare. Very rare. Um, just heal. And Elixir. I am actually a bit worried about my healing items, so maybe I shouldn't have healed there. I do have a lot of revives. And the double, uh, the double tower, and the single actually, is more about revives. Even this Goldeen is better to use Sonic Boom on than Shockwave. Shockwave is a range, it can kill, but Sonic Boom is more likely to kill, because Shockwave is nowhere near 90% chance. Right, so this Quillfish has Quick Claw, which is part of the reason why I wanted to heal there, back to full. Oh no. Oh no. This is a bad one to miss. Do not Quick Claw. Okay, good. Mantine, I can shockwave this too. Basically, you need the four times effectiveness for shockwave to be able to one-hit something. Uh, but I have to heal now again. Because I'm missing that quillfish. Oh, I am so low on healing. I think after this one, I'm actually going to sell all of my TMs and then buy more Hyper Versions. Because I really think I'm going to run out if I don't. Obviously, I'd prefer to be able to buy Potions because they're so much cheaper, but they just don't sell them here. And I'm not going to fly all the way back to Viridian or something to be able to buy more Potions. So the reason I needed to heal there is because this Arcanine has extreme speed. So if I went in with 5 health, it would just pick extreme speed and kill me. I could explode on this, but because I have full health, I'm actually just going to go a Sonic Boom. Yeah. Because it is faster to use Sonic Boom over Explosion, even if you don't have to revive. Just because you uh, don't watch the Electrode um, kill sequence. Alright, so that's the second one done. Two down, two to go. Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna go to the Mart, I'm gonna buy some Hypers, I'm really worried. It feels almost criminal to sell Earthquake. <laughs> I mean, most of these TMs, it feels criminal to be selling. That's the best way for me to get cash. Yeah, 8 more, I feel a lot safer, safer with 8 more. And now I just won't worry about it as much, so... I won't make as many bad decisions, hopefully. <laughs> Alright, so now double. So now... All of these fights are double battles. And so double battles in general are much harder than single battles, because obviously you can't kill them both in one turn. So in every fight, something's going to be getting an action. Second shiny. Sewage green Espeon. Okay, good. That Jolteon actually has a Quick Claw. 
Psychic on Rattata. Kill. Uh, let's go Pidgey. And so in the double, that's usually what happens. Your partner Pokemon ends up dying. So you end up using a lot of revives in the double tower because you need other Pokemon alive. And like even as safety, because if Electro dies, you need to send out something else to be able to revive Electro to be able to send it back out. And what's even worse is the worst double fight is the very last one. So you need to have like everybody alive for that fight ready to go. Oh, Houndoom could protect. That's actually really good because I'm attacking Alakazam. I'm really surprised he did that with a level 2 Mankey there because he definitely could have killed the level 2 Mankey. And then I missed Sonic Boom. And he picked Electrode. And he burnt Electrode. Uh, Alright, I may as well full restore. That's kind of the advantage of the double battles, is when you get it to a two-on-one, you can attack with Electrode and heal at the same time. Alright, this one's a pretty bad fight because... Oh no, that's... It very, very bad, because they are both 100% on Electrode. Uh, I should send out Pidgey. Because he's going to go dig, and that's going to be targeting Pidgey, probably. There's actually no point healing Electrode to full, so I'm actually just going to revive Rattata on this spare turn. I can't send out Electrode. I have to send out Rattata. Because then Golem's Dig would hit Electrode. And he's uh, targeting Mankey. He'll kill Mankey anyway though. So now I can send out Electrode. And now we will revive Pidgey back, I guess. And hopefully actually hit one this time. Thank you. But yeah, you can see, if you miss a Sonic Boom in the double battle, it's so much more consequential. Just keep using revives. See, I've run through my revives. I've used, like, what, seven on this one fight? This is the fourth one. So this Crobat is the only Pokemon that speed ties with Electrode, which is really like quite surprising because a lot of Pokemon at lower levels do speed tie with each other. Because there's just not as many values as you can get on. Now I will heal again. Everything that outspeeds, I mean, obviously outspeeds, and there's a lot of Pokemon that Electrode beats by one. That Crobat's just the only one that's a speed time. Then number five is the Blissian Arcanine. This is the only one where you don't target the right side first, so you can't just mash A at the start. 
and I have made that mistake before, and it is a very bad mistake to make. Got to target the Arcanine first. Oh. I want Caterpie to be at full health for the last fight. Very happy I have all six Pokemon. Th this gets much dicier when you have like four or so pokes. Because in a lot of the fights, you want that many Pokemon alive. So I'm actually going to explode on this fight. It might, uh, when you see what explosion does, you might be thinking, why on earth were you not using this in some of the other double fights? Because it hits everybody on the field and just wins in one turn. But even with doing this, it's actually slower than just going Sonic Boom, take the turn, Sonic Boom, because you have to revive everybody afterwards. But the reason it's worth doing here is because I would have had to heal as well. Because Electrode wasn't at full health. Uh, revive. And revive. Now this is seven, I'm gonna explode here as well. This one you always explode on them. That third Earth Ring one, sometimes you do use Sonic Boom. But this Lantern's got above 20, so it's an easy choice to explode here. And even with Electrode's quite poor attack, Explosion is very, very powerful. Because still in this gen, it's effectively 500 base power. But the way it actually works is it's 200 and then it halves the opponent's defense. And at lower levels, that's actually really powerful. A lot of the time, that'll end up being more than the corresponding 500. Because again, because of the flooring, like if they've got nine defense and it takes it to four and a half, it'll then actually be four. I'm not gonna revive Raditai here. I'm just gonna go into this last one with five pokes because I don't want to run out of revives. So this fight is the worst by far. So they've got a Gyarados, which you could Shockwave, except they've also got a Rhydon, which has Lightning Rod as its ability, so you can't Shockwave. The Rhydon also has a Quick Claw, and it has Earthquake, and it has Rock Slide, and it has 21 HP, so you can't kill it in one hit. And I miss Sonic Boom. That is so bad. Uh... I think he's going to pick Earthquake. I'm going to go Pidgey. Oh, I'm wishing I revived Rattata now. That is the worst Sonic Boom to miss in the Trainer Tower by so far. Good dodge. That was a quick claw, by the way, because it went before Gyarados. Uh... I think I should send out Rattata. Hyper Beam. Okay. Well, Gyarados is immobile this turn. I'm thinking in that case... Maybe I should go for Rhydon. 
No. No. Uh, still gonna go for Gyarados. Rock Slide, good. That won't kill Electrode. Did kill Radata. Um, I think by sending out Caterpie now, he should pick Rock Slide. Oh my god, I missed again. He's got Mega Horn, okay. Okay, so now Rhydon's on one health. There's the Rock Slide. And I'll live. Okay, so... Um, I'm gonna play this a bit safe, I think. I'm gonna revive something, and then I'm actually gonna try and kill it with Weedle. So the reason I revive something there is because it has Quick Claw. If it activated Quick Claw and used Earthquake without me reviving something, the entire, like, tower would be a non-complete. That was an absolutely horrific final fight. That was awful. But double is done. There's now only single to go. Uh, I only have three revives, which is a bit dicey. That's actually, in fact, very dicey. I want more revives. Why didn't I sell? I, you know, this is what I should have done when I was selling. The TMs is do this. Now I can buy three revives. Let's do that. Okay, just singles to go. So singles is the easiest of the four. So now that I've got enough revives, I should definitely be fine. It's also the fastest. Just thinking if I should equip the Citrus Berry. I think I should actually. Focus Band. Lovely. Earthquake. Dead. Good thing I bought extra revives. Otherwise, I would already be screwed. show when Quick Claw activates, but you are faster than this Gengar's gone. Mankey didn't die. Yeah, we'll just heal. It's a bit of a waste for now, because Gengar's gone is just going to kill me anyway. Alright, that was a horrible first fight. Alright, so I'm going to equip the uh, Citrus Berry. Because quite a few of the pokes from this point onwards, if I miss a Sonic Boom, they'll do like half damage, and then I'll be in danger. But the Citrus Berry will kind of protect me from that. And the way this is gone, I kind of expect to miss another Sonic Boom before this is done. Seven fights to go. That first fight is... Probably the most dangerous of single though. I missed another Sonic Beam. And we're going double team. Alright. Fun times ahead. 
Here we go. So the other issue with this is I could actually run out of Sonic Booms with this many misses. Oh, this is incredible. It's almost worth just using Shockwave at this point, but it isn't because he's going to start attacking me soon. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's the attack. Well. That is not one I have had before. I actually think if I die this time to the Beedrill, I should actually wipe and start the whole tower over again. Because if I just sit here, I'm going to run out of healing items. And I'm going to run out of Sonic Boom PP. Yeah, I'm just going to wipe. It's going to take ages for the Beedrill to kill the Weedle, I think. Oh no, it's got Aerial Ace. Easy. Jeez, that doesn't one hit? That is surprising. Can't even hit Tackle. There we go. I'm, uh, I don't think I have anything else I can sell to buy another revive. Because these are worth nothing. Oh, I can sell the X accuracy. That's Oh, the Leaf Stone. Yeah, that'll be enough for one more. Okay. This is kind of like the bare minimum amount of revives. Yeah, so as I was saying before when I entered this, the Singles Tower is the hardest by far of all of the towers. Okay, good. No, that's Quick Floor again. That's Quick Claw again! Oh. This is incredible. It really is. I cannot use any more revives. I simply cannot. Two are required for the later parts of this tower. Okay. That is fight one down. Uh, we'll heal. I 
I don't actually think you can get confused by anything else. So we'll put the catcher. It actually might be three revives you need. I can't remember now. I guess we'll find out. Oh no, dude. No, dude. Not again. Not again. Thank God. Oh no, dude. Bro. This has Sonic Boom, by the way. So if it picks Sonic Boom now... GG. Alright. Um, um, I have no idea how I'm going to complete this tower now. Because you definitely need at least two revives. I have no words. I really have none. I'm going to have to find more money. That's all I can do, and I have no idea where I can find money. I don't think they sell for very much. I just want to see how much it is. Yeah, that's nowhere near enough. Um, actually, you know what? I'm mercy killing. I'm not completing. We're ending there. I'm not doing it. I have no idea where to get more items, and we were already behind, and I was supposed to make up time, so I'm just killing that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm very disappointed that I did not get to finish, and I did not foresee that happening at all, but sometimes that's how it goes. This is Pokemon. But yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, make sure to stay tuned. Obviously, a lot of stuff still coming up. Uh, Mikami's doing Legend of Zelda up next. <sighs> stay cool. Peace.